course, five on five. It's basically like a basketball game, but they have quarters of 12 minutes each year. We have halves of 15 minutes. A lot of nonstop action. And these are all our platform streaming partners. This broadcast is being live streamed all over the world. So wherever you have loved ones or fans of the game, tell them to tune in. And Sports Eye as well on YouTube. You can definitely catch the action on both field A and field B over there. Be part of the conversation. Get part of the interactive chat. Give us your views, your reviews. As we are just about set to start. Just lining up the teams. Beautiful conditions here at the La Liga Academy. Absolutely world-class facilities. It's a real hub of sport. And there you see the team PWC of the UAE striding out in the national colors of red, white, black, and green. Lining up for the national anthems. And the Galacticos of Nigeria striding in as well. As action is all set to resume on day two of the World Corporate Champions Cup, powered by FIFCO. Right then, we're almost set for the action to resume, but before that, we'll have the national anthems. Fist bumps all round and as the action is about to resume, Galacticos of Nigeria versus PWC of the UAE. Both teams with a defeat to their name so far on day one. But now they can get back to winning ways. Good to see the sportsman spirit being established early. The ref and the two linesmen out there directing the two sides. It's going to be a very interesting game. Tough to pick a winner at this stage. Nigeria have won the toss. And uh, I guess they've decided to switch sides. Fair enough. That won't be a hassle at all. And you can see to the far right of your screen, number 18 for the PWC. He is their top gun. He's a brilliant player. Last minute instructions from the officials and action should be set to resume. We have an absolute boatload of fixtures today. So tune in the entire day right from morning till the early afternoon. We'll be going. Very little gap between the games, just about 10 to 12 minutes and the next game resumes on the hour mark. PWC looking smart, looking fit, and looking determined to get their names in the limelight. Get some goals, get the victory, get the three points for the group. All set for the kickoff then, day two of the World Corporate Champions Cup here at the La Liga Academy in Dubai. And let the hostilities resume, let the action begin. It's going to be PWC with the kickoff. There and there. Black shorts and white tops in Nigeria. The white shorts and the green and white tops. Some pressure on the home side to deliver the result after yesterday's disappointment. We're all set to go. Pat Pan on screen number 18 for PWC. Watch out for him. Whistle has blown and we're underway. PWC looking to build up from the back. Nigeria with the early pressing. Finding some space on the right flank immediately. 
having a glare at the linesman, but he said it's all good, it's all fair. Of course, it is close quarters football, five on five futsal. So you can expect a lot of physicality, a lot of tough tackling. And you can see there immediately, 18 v 18, getting stuck in to each other. UAE trying to build from the back. Nice press there, but intercepted. And took a bit of a blow to his throat there. The referee has pulled up the Galacticos for the foul. It's a fair distance away to, direct, uh, to try a direct free kick. Perhaps looking to work it around. No, he goes for goal and just past the right upright. Tried to curl it in behind the wall. Just couldn't quite get it right. It's very difficult at that angle and that distance. But it will be a corner for the home side. So a positive start. Rolled in a bit of a shy at goal, but it's just skewed away. Safely done in the end. And it'll be important not to make defensive errors because you are made to pay immediately. It takes a split second to go from defense to attack. This time Kola, lovely back heel down the left flank, finding some space, looking up for a cross. Plays it in short, off the keeper. Good movement there from the Galactico. So both teams on the front foot, both teams pressing for the advantage. You can see the Iranians in the background. They're also in this group, keeping a close eye on proceedings. They also had to face defeat in their opening game against Saudi Arabia. So a lot of teams with a lot to prove on match day two of the World Corporate Champions Cup. No cross in, beats everybody in the box. Where was the Nigerian striker? Very, very dangerous cross there. Found the gap, wins the ball in the PwC half. Up a hit on the half volley and that's skied over the top. Not quite catching it on the boot. And the UAE look to rebuild once again. Nice dummy there, but it's beaten everybody. The Nigerian keeper just strolls across. Of course, you're allowed to throw the ball as a keeper in 5-on-5 five five futsal. Trying that early through ball down the right flank. No throw-ins allowed. It's only kick-ins, remember. Sometimes in the heat of the action, even the players forget themselves. Oh, good move there down the left flank. But good pressing there from the UAE as well. Early kick-in taken. There's some space. Takes a shot and goal, but a good save. A double save this time from the UAE keeper. Brilliant stuff. Cat-like reflexes. And now the UAE can break with that big number 18. Has some space. Has a shot. But it's gone past the left upright. Pressure from the Nigerian defense. So we've had a brilliant start already. Four minutes into the half. Plenty of chances being created. Lovely dummy there from Kola. Down the left flank. One on one with the keeper. And he slid it in for the first goal for the Galacticos. What a finish by the number one player for Nigeria. Brilliant sprint down the left hand flank. Nobody could catch up with him. And just eased it into that bottom corner. 1-0. So just when you expected PwC to get on the front foot, they've been hit hard. Brilliant speed down the left flank. Left his marker for dead. And then just slid the ball past the UAE keeper. Right then, through ball down the right flank. Once again in space. He's had to hold up though, waiting for a teammate. Kola once again on the ball. But this time they've just about ripped it away. He's such a brilliant physical presence. Right up there for Nigeria. Hard to get the ball away from him. Brilliant interception once again. A chance for the Galacticos. They've squared it and it's 2-0. Poor defending by the UAE. And they've had to pay the ultimate price. The Galacticos of Nigeria 2-0 up in just five minutes. What 
excellent start here for the Nigerians. They have come out of the gates in a flash and punished the UAE for some poor defending, some overloads on the counters, and they put it away twice. UAE with possession right now, looking to rebuild. They've been rocked early here. Backtracking towards the keeper, and he'll be relieved to get the whistle from the referee because he was absolutely going nowhere. Once again, that outlet ball has been a problem for the PWC team. They haven't been able to cross that halfway line, that halfway circle easily. And a bit of mischief there from the big Nigerian number 10. Already has a goal to his name, a brilliant finish. Amin on the ball this time, showing his power and speed. He's pulled up for a foul, so it's going to be a direct free kick towards the goal. So this is an opportunity for the UAE team, but meanwhile, there's an injury on the field for Nigeria. And they're requesting a substitute. It's his left wrist. I think he fell awkwardly there on the hard AstroTurf surface. But he looks to be okay. Just needs to get it checked out just in case. And he seems to have recovered fairly well. So a chance for a shot on goal. Three men in the wall. It would be difficult to breach it. Trying to nutmeg one of the defenders and immediately cleared. Right into the UAE dugout. Taking no chances there at all. We're halfway into the first half. And the Nigerians are in the lead by two. Fast and furious action here at the World Corporate Champions Cup. Dubai 2021. Of course, we are at the La Liga Academy. If you want some... If you want to watch some brilliant 5 and 5 futsal action, pop in and take a look. Trying a dummy there, but didn't fall for it. The UAE back line. You can see the silky skills of Kola there. Nicely cut out by the UAE defense. Now trying to rotate, switching from defense to attack. Finding some space down the left flank. Some tough tackles coming in. Played the advantage, and in the end, when the striker couldn't go anywhere, he did blow the whistle. Nigerians on the front foot this time. A shot at goal, but this time, way. And now the rolling substitutes coming in. Tripped up there. Oh, once again, those silly little niggly fouls coming in. Already almost 10 minutes flown by of the first half. The Galacticos looking comfortable. And the home side struggling to create opportunities. It's a set piece situation here for the Nigerians then. Those long corners. Plays it well back, gets his sweeper keeper into play. That's always an option in 5-on-5 five five futsal. Trying to work the opening, but can only find the UAE defenders in front of him as they look to rebuild from the back. Once again, nobody there to receive that through ball down the left flank. Build a play somewhere that the UAE side needs to work on a lot more. Need another person alongside number 18 to work those openings. Give him an option, the give and go. This time, good stout defending there, conceding the kick in. Played quickly into the gap. Good to see number 18 for Nigeria has recovered after his blow to the wrist. Trying a low cross there. Eagle-eyed PWC defense. Speculative shot, but nicely blocked. Nigerians look set to rebuild from the back. They've always employed the keeper to get an opening down the flanks. Of course, it, there will need to be a lot of off to get an 
opened on the flanks. Sanchez expect to get the ball and find openings. They need quick feet, a lot of movement, a lot of endurance as well. So it's important for the coaching staff to keep their players fresh. Now here's an opportunity for the UAE. Nicely blocked away this time. Solidly by the Nigerians. They've called themselves the Galacticos and you can see why. A powerful star-studded side. Named after that famous Real Madrid team of the early 2000s. They're looking to live up to that tag. This time, nicely cut away. Bit of an opportunity here for the UAE. And a goal, a brilliant finish here. Spinning away and into the bottom corner. That will give them a lot of hope, a lot of confidence. Game on. Just about three and a half minutes to go in the first half and they've got that goal. They've got themselves on the score sheet. And now they feel like they're right back in the game. The Galacticos, finally their defense being breached. Trying to flip that ball away. Bit of an opening here. But good stout defending once again. The commitment levels and the pressing by both sides have been exemplary. Trying to throw ball down the right flank to their star striker. But a bit of poor control there. It's going to scurry away from him. Now the UAE can get on the ball. Run some set plays. Once again to the striker. Beautiful turn down the left flank. He's in a bit of space. But that ball has just run away from him. Was looking to cross the ball in. Beautiful turn down the left flank. He's in a bit of space. That ball has just run away from him. Second and it ran away from him. Trying a give and go there. It's definitely a battle of the striker. Skied over the keeper. That was an opportunity for the Galacticos. Just tried to hit it too hard. Tried to place it in the top corner. And in the end spliced it well over. Oh, giving the ball away in their own half. That is dangerous, but thankfully they've recovered. They need to use their keeper more. That's a good idea. Exploit the spaces down the flanks. Bola on the ball once again. Trying a shot, but it goes well wide. Just about two minutes to go in the half. And spliced it well over. Galacticos, both sides capitalizing on each other's mistakes. Stepping outside there, so a good area of possession for the Nigerians. Low cross into the right flank. There's a bit of space there, but they chose to go all the way back to the sweeper keeper. Quick ball movement is the name of the game. And this man has been absolutely sensational as the pivot. Nicely intercepted by the home side, but once again, there was an opportunity for a counter. Could not quite execute it. And now the Nigerians are on the front foot. Good defending there. Nicely cleared. Amin on the ball once again. But they'll get across to intercept. You can see it's very, very tough out there. Non-stop action, non-stop movement. The pace of the game is at 100 miles per hour. We're into the final minute of the first half. A corner here for the UAE. Shot at goal. Off the post. Can you believe it? They worked that routine very nicely there, but then it hits the upright. Very, very close. Now this time there's a foul there. Missed out on the ball. It took out the defender itself. In fact, it's given against Nigeria. So the UAE still retained possession odd seconds to play so they can work a set piece routine here final opportunity before the halftime whistle nice footwork there on the right flank and that will be no the referee will allow them to take the corner quickly it's a foul in fact Let's see if the UE can equalize. Lofted ball, but beyond 
to a striker. He still has time to get a shot away. He's working it onto his left. Down to left flank. Nice turn. Brilliant turn once again. And that is surely a foul, or is it? He is absolutely gassed. Been going non-stop for 15 minutes. The Nigerians are protesting, but that was certainly a foul there. Once again, a free kick opportunity. Can they find the man in space? Can they find the equalizer? Worked in and desperate defending there by the Nigerians. And that will be the halftime whistle. They will go in with a one goal lead. But it's by the barest of margins. A gripping, tense encounter taking place. Both sides unhappy with the referee. So that means he's done a very good job. So we'll be back in just a few minutes for the second half. Right then, all set for the second half to resume between the Galacticos of Nigeria and the home side PWC. 2-1 is the score. Amin Nassar with the goal for PWC and Odusote Kola. Brilliant finish. Early shot at goal, but that's gone well wide. Ambitious, but that's the name of the game. Trying to catch the opposition unawares. UAE look to rebuild, given away once again. This is an opportunity. But some good defending there. They crowded him out, double marked him. UAE need to get on the front foot here. Need to find the equalizer. Good interception by the Nigerian defense. Play towards Odusote. He's definitely the kingpin of this Galacticos lineup. Cleared away. So a bit of a hectic start here to the second half. Two halves of 15 minutes each. That's a poor clearance. Looks to absolutely nobody. And it's dribbled away for a kick in for Nigeria. So PWC, they're only a goal away from being on level terms. But they need 
to be sharp at the back. Can't allow themselves to give openings to Odisote Cola, the number 10 for the Galacticos. Already has a fair few goals to his name in this tournament. Cleared away down the left flank. Tried to take it on the... Already has a fair few goals to his name in this tournament. Cleared away there, but just bouncing off his foot. And now the UAE look to rebuild. Get some space on the left flank. Good aggressive tackling here from the Nigerians. They're not allowing them any breathing space once they cross that halfway line. And the action absolutely flows by. Oh, the Sote Cola once again on the ball. Trying to post up, create some openings here. Tries that low cross, but nicely blocked away. Trying to post up, create some openings here. As you see on the Galacticos of Nigeria, 2-1, it's been very, very close so far. Barely anything to choose. A low cross across the goal. But there was nobody there at the end of it. Would have been 3-1 for sure. Good pressing here from the Nigerians, but that creates opportunities here for PWC. Breaking down the left flank, trying to square the ball. Desperate defending. That could have been very, very dangerous. Once again, the referee keeping a close eye on proceedings. Boy, the, the tackles are really flying in right now. Both sides working hard on the ball. 3-1 for the Galacticos and another error at the back. And they've paid. Both sides. Ball. Three one. Critical error once again. UAE made to pay for their mistakes. And now the Nigerians have a two goal cushion once again, with just about twelve minutes to go. This time down the right flank, there's an opening. Amin tries to square it on his right foot. Beautiful block there by the Nigerian keeper. He needed to make that save and keeps the two goal cushion alive. Good out inlet ball to Amin once again. Back heel into space. But the Nigerians just about get it away. Brilliant move that. He has a lot of skill and quality. It's a battle of the PWC 18 versus the Nigeria number 10. Amin and Odusote, the two stars for their side, squared into the box, but there's nobody there. Once again, whenever he's on the ball, he creates opportunities. He creates chances. And the UAE backline struggling with him all day. He's been absolutely relentless. Trying to work the ball out of the back once again to utilize their keeper a lot more. Finding some space down the left flank, but the ball will run away. Here the Nigerians have closed down the gaps extremely efficiently. They have a lot of pace and agility. And they utilize their keeper well at the right times. That's been the key. Trying to turn his man, squaring the ball in, but there's Amin to clean up. He doesn't defend a lot, but when he does, he does it very, very well. A big physical presence. Amin to clean up. He doesn't defend a lot, but when he does, he does it very well. They've dominated the middle of the park. And you can see that pressing in. Once again, on the left flank. Bit of an opening, squares the ball, but straight to the UAE defender. Very, very close. And when they need to... Snuff out an attack, they do it very efficiently. Nicely working the ball around, using the keeper. That is brilliant stuff from the Galacticos. They're truly playing like their namesake right now. Under 10 minutes to go. The home side getting frustrated, being denied possession, being denied the ball. But that will lead to mistakes as they get tired out, chasing after the Nigerians. Lovely through ball down the line. 
Now they're really taking chance. And there it is, the fourth goal for Nigeria. The big celebration. Low sh Now they're really taking chance. And there it is, the fourth goal. It's all gone pear shaped for the home side then. And as they started to press for goals, they created gaps at the back. And the Nigerians have taken full toll. Shot at goal, but that angle was always favoring the keeper. And now the rampage is about to start, I have a feeling. Because the Nigerians may get many more goals. Another shot. Brilliant block there by the UAE keeper. He had to make that save. Amin on the ball then. Here's an opportunity. Tries the through ball. But once again, it's intercepted there. Just at the right time. Absolutely breathless action here. At the World Corporate Champions Cup, Dubai 2021. Powered by FIFCO. What a start we've had to the morning. Goals. Chances, action, non-stop. And there you can see the shots are raining on the PWC goal now. The keeper has to be alert for every single second of this game. And that three-goal deficit may be a bridge too far for the PWC right now. Calling for some substitutes here. The Nigerians, a very animated bunch, always in the ears of the ref, trying to Shade the decisions their way. Now the rolling subs are on. Losing possession to Amin. And the keeper looking frustrated. That was a foul. They didn't need to concede. Now the rolling subs are on. Losing possession to Amin. Shot on goal. Going to be the captain himself taking responsibility for it. Squares the ball instead. Shot at goal, but a brilliant save by the Nigerian keeper. Got his big captain himself taking responsibility for it. Squares the ball instead. Shot at goal. But it was finding the bottom corner. And they needed to react quickly. Low cross into the keeper once again. Gets that big foot down. Amin gets an opening. And there he's buried it. Beautiful goal here for the home side. 4-2. Game on. Just over six minutes to play. Amin gets his second goal of the game. Brilliant finish. He really is a class player. Work towards the right flank, trying to find the Nigerian. He really is a class player. Let's place the ball. Under six minutes to play. Can the PWC team do a miracle? Can the home team get back into this game? Will depend on this man on the ball right now, Amin Nassar, number 18. He really makes the team tick. As the creative force, the center forward option. Put through ball, finding some space, trying to out dribble the Nigerian defense. And now the counter is on. Looking towards the center, has a bit of a speculative shot, but horribly miscues it. Shot it all the way on to field B. Five minutes to go. Mustafa trying to square the ball, but once again, the build up play that's been lacking for the home side. Still working the ball around, still working hard. Nigerians taking their time now. They're trying to kill the momentum of the home side. Tola on the ball picks up a corner here. So further crucial seconds will be wasted here by the Galacticos. Of course, the clock works in reverse order in futsal. Shot and goal, but a good save by the UAE keeper. And the counter is on Odusote Kola. Brilliant tackling. But that's a bit of a harsh call. Having a smile at the ref. He felt that was a clean tackle, as did I. There you can see, he's always dropping back, challenging the home side's defenders and their ability to retain possession. 
step up bursting through the middle sliding tackles always frowned upon in futsal so you have to be very very precise and the referee has blown the whistle and in fact given him a booking there for Odusote he's had several warnings but finally the referee's patience has run out under four minutes to play 4-2 for PWC Keeper on the ball then. He needs to be a lot more adventurous now. Long ball down the line, but once again, Amin getting frustrated with the referees. He's been fouled persistently throughout the game. But what, once again, a free kick opportunity. Can he bury this? That would be the goal of the tournament so far. It's a fair way out. And you can see the UA bench getting upset with the referee, looking for the calls. The Nigerians have really stepped up their aggression in the last three minutes as they're trying to close out this game. Three men in the wall for the Galacticos. Amin on the ball. Low cross deflected away. Wall for the Galacticos. Amin on the ball. Low cross deflected away. It's just not the execution that they required. And it's going to be a goal kick for the Galacticos. Two and a half minutes to go in this op opening fixture of match day two of the World Corporate Champions Cup, powered by FIFCO. And is this a goal? Has it been given? World Corporate Champions Cup, powered by FIFCO. Lifted into the goal, once again disastrous for the home side. That will decide the game. They have a three goal cushion. Critical errors at the back. They made that last night versus Monaco as well. And once again versus the Nigerians. They've taken at least two goals from it. Low cross into the box. Nicely cut out. And now Odu Sote breaking away down the right flank. Just playing for time now. Under a minute and a half to play in the game. They're sitting comfortably on a three-goal cushion. Just need to play keep away. And once again, it'll be the home side. They need to work on their playmaking from the back. They need to cut out the defensive errors. It's cost them two straightforward goals once again. The commitment levels, the endurance levels are up there. Odusote, one-on-one -on -one with the defender, beats him. And off the crossbar, very, very close to number six. He's been the star of the game so far for the Galacticos. A persistent goal threat. He's gotten a couple to his name as well. And now we're into the final minute of the game. But the Galacticos will take three points. They have a corner to their name. And the home side have finally given up the ghost. Been an entertaining clash though. Seven goals in it so far. Both sides very aggressive in defense. But once again, the national team making some bad errors at the back. Gifting two goals, and that may well have been the difference. Odusote Kola for the Galacticos and Amin Asar were standout performers. But in the end, it has been a bit of a one-sided route, to be quite honest. And there it is. The final whistle has been blown early. It's a comfortable victory for the Nigerians. Over the home side of PWC. So they get their three points. And they get the victory. Fist bumps all around. This game was played in a competitive but friendly manner. And it will be just a few minutes till we have the second game of the day. So stay right here with us at the World Corporate Champions Cup. We'll see you soon.
Welcome to the second game between Mali and Iran. We are here at the La Liga Academy for the Corporate Champions Cup. Brought to us by FIFCO. The start of the tournament yesterday, we had some amazing games. Mali were two goals down and then came back scoring four and winning the game. And Iran, who are the champions, or the defending champions of this tournament, will have their work cut out. It's hot. It's humid. It takes a lot, or lot out of these players. Squad for Mali, Aruna, Mahmdu, Babwa, and the rest. Thirty-minute game, fifteen minutes, two halves, and a five-minute break in the middle. Brought to us by Fifco. We are playing with Fifco rules. And again, even though this is a corporate tournament. Quality of football has been very high. So has been the quality of the officiating as well. And there we have it. We have the kickoff. Mali from left to right in their colorful kit. And the first shot by Dembele hit out of the park. So quick start and quick intentions from the Mali side. Iran, on the other hand, have won their first game as well against the Saudi Saab team. There we have it from the wing. Number four. Has that gone in? Iran has put the ball in the back of the net. Has that gone in? The game has started really quickly in the first minute itself. Iran has put one goal. on the counter, but Iran again, very strong in defense. Opportunity there and the goalkeeper stops the ball. Hussein from Iran making a huge impact here already. There we have it from the wing, Uwes tries to get that ball in. Huge impact here already. There we have it from the wing. Uwes. So far away from the goalkeeper and the goalpost. Again, starting from the back. Now Hussein again with the ball. Trying to make something of this. Ball goes out for a free kick very quickly. Mali has the ball back and then gives it away to Iran. Very good footwork. And another shot far away from the goalkeeper and the goal post. He has the ball back and then gives it away to Iran. Very good footwork. And another shot. They're trying to bring that ball in from the sides. And then have a striker or a poacher right at the goal post. Waiting to put that ball into the back of the net. Very good tactics indeed. Mali now keeping the ball with them in the back. Trying to build something here. They have a habit of coming from behind. Yesterday they were two goals down. And then scored four in quick succession. was very close. Good defending there. Very good save by the Iran goalkeeper. A hard shot by Dembele. 
the Iran goalkeeper was there to save that ball. Now we have a corner, quick corner taken, and the ball goes out for a free kick. Subhan, the goalkeeper of Iran, had to make two very good saves so far. Ball with Jabr. A shot taken. Again, good goalkeeping there and a quick release. Goal mount to goal mount action here in the game between Mali and Iran. We're only five minutes into the game and we've seen at least three or four shots taken on each end. So a lot of action here at the World Corporate Championship. Brought to you by FIFCO. Sliding dive there to save the ball. So a lot of action here at the World Corporate Championship. Brought to you by Goal at this stage. And another goal there by Iran. It's that man. And another goal there. Back of the net. Iran to Mali nil. Mali now starting again from the back. Five minutes into the game, they've already conceded two. And Iran has been absolutely brilliant in the midfield. They've not let Mali get into any sort of rhythm in the middle of the pitch. Every time the Mali players try to build something, they've got the Iran defenders right in front of them. tackle there again Oves with the ball now could this be the third goal no it's not brilliant goalkeeping there by Mali and Iran goalkeeper but that was very interesting he had to let the ball get into the back of the box before he could touch that Jabber Oves on the right hand side have been absolutely brilliant and again, here we've got Hussein, who's playing like a left striker. Goalkeeper Subhan now with the ball. Iran again on the attack. Hussein, no room to take a shot. Cramp there by the Mali defenders. Tries to chip the ball. Mali on the attack now. And again, good goalkeeping there by Subhan. Smothering the ball, making sure that the ball doesn't kick get loose. A shot there again from Iran. Corner. Quick corner taken. Jabber now with the ball. They're trying again, and it's that man, Hussein, puts the ball in the back of the net. Iran now has a three goal cushion. Again, and it's that man, Hussein. Some quick running substitutions now. As we said, it is quite hot outside. These players might not be professional footballers, but they are very fit. Takes a lot of energy to play in this heat and humidity. And Mali now trying to build something. A three goal. That's it. One on one. And he's been tripped. That is definitely a foul. We'll have to see if the referee gives a Raza, the man who conceded that foul, a card. No, he does not. Right at the back middle of the pitch, that foul. Could have easily been a one-on-one -on -one situation. And now, again, Mali on the attack. They've had very little of the possession and have been a bit slow in the Iran half. Having said that, Iran now on the attack. Fresh legs, number nine. Amin taking a shot. Half. Having said that, Iran now. Fresh legs, number nine. A corner. 
And yes, that was a corner given by the referee. So good decision. It hit the Mali defenders. Quick corner taken. And again, very good goalkeeping. Now on the counter, Mali. Bit of a crossover there. And they've given the ball away. So a three goal cushion. Very good passing. And then again, a brilliant call there by Iran. They are. So a three goal cushion. Very good passing. And then again, a brilliant. He's just walked into the pitch and has made a direct impact scoring that goal. Crucial goal to give them a very, very big cushion now. We're only in the ninth minute of the game, so there's still 21 minutes left. Can Mali have stage a comeback? Well, with that kind of play, it will be very difficult. Again, number 19. Hassan missing a golden opportunity for a fifth goal. The goalkeeper in his way, but he was one-on-one -on -one there. He should have scored, had a lot of time as well. Now Mali on the counter once again. I'm sure they will want one goal, one goal before the break. But with goalkeeping like that from Subhan, it is going to be extremely difficult for Mali. That was a brilliant save, full stretch. The goal post is not that big, but that was shot, was going into the right-hand corner. And Subhan was all over that. Brilliant goalkeeping, excellent save, one for the cameras. And now Iran is back. Trying to build something. Interception there by the Mali defenders. He takes a shot. And a ball goes back. It's extremely quick action here. Even our cameramen are struggling to keep up with the pace. Mali now with the ball. Trying to build something. And now Iran has taken the ball back. It's with Mustafa, and Mustafa is again put it in the back of the net. Iran 5, Mali 0. It's all one-way traffic at the moment for Iran. They have is again put it in the back of it's in the first half. Maybe some fresh legs needed now for Mali. As we were mentioning, they did win their first game. But Iran very much the champion side and they're playing like a defending champions. Very quick on the ball, quick to release the ball. Their goalkeeper has been brilliant. Their defending has been amazing as well. And now just keeping the ball in the and wasting some time. I'm sure they want to go into this halftime with a clean sheet. They're building up again. Raza. Raza gives the ball to Hassan, who puts it in the back of the net. This is all one way traffic at the moment. Six half time with a clean sheet. They're building up again. Raza. And I think at this stage, Mali would be hoping for the half time whistle to collect their thoughts, go back and take a break. Iran's juggernaut moving forward. Six goal cushion at the moment. It's been amazing football to watch. And there was a chance to pull one back for Mali. The goal post was open. The goalkeeper was on the floor. But they have missed the golden opportunity. It was Dembele. Now again trying to build something. Keita. Keita takes a shot. Goalkeeper Subhan is there as he has been for the first seven, for the first 14 minutes of the game. Goalkeeper Kulboli. Uh, torrid time and the torrid time continues this time it's number 18 Masood for Iran who puts the ball in the back of the net Iran has now a seven goal lead and I don't see Mali coming back from here 
Beg your pardon, that was Abbas, number eight, who scored the goal. Their captain. Dembele, number, sorry, Keita, number nine, and Dembele ha have been trying very hard on the wings. Number sorry, Keita, number nine, and Dembele ha have been Subhan of Iran, who's not let the ball pass him in the first 14 minutes of the game. There is a corner now quickly taken. Dolore with the pass, but no one is there to get at the end of the ball. 7-0 in the first half. And you'll have to think, can Iran get a double-digit lead here in terms of the goals? We still have 15 more minutes to go in the second half. Mali would want to have a consolation goal. Take one goal before they go into the break. But with Subhan there right at the back, that doesn't seem to be an option. Number 33, Subhan has been fantastic as the goalkeeper. Another opportunity. But this time, Iran's goalkeeper is there. Number 8, Sub Abbas, trying to get to the back. But the ball was intercepted by the goalkeeper. Now the goalkeeper right up into the second half, trying to play as a midfielder. They need all the midfielders they can get to score a goal. There is a good opportunity. And again, the, the goalkeeper, that man, Subhan, brilliant tackle. The Mali player is on the floor. Number four, Dembele has been brilliant. He's been running up and down the pitch. That's good to see. We'll take a very short break for the halftime whistle and come back for the second half. Can Mali stage a comeback here or will Iran take this game away from Mali and score a couple more goals? See you after the break. Welcome back to the second half. 
We're on Sports Eye, your platform partner for FIFCO. The World Corporate Champions Cup brought to you by FIFCO. We are here in Dubai at the La Liga Academy in ICC. Sports City, Iran, seven goals to the good in the first half. Starting the second half now, going left to right. And Mali will have to stage a miracle comeback from here to get any points. Iran now taking their time. They've changed their goalkeeper, interestingly. Subhan was absolutely magnificent in the goalpost, stopping almost every shot coming his way. Got Keita and Dembele, number nine and number four for Mali, who've been brilliant, but their finishing has been a bit poor. And now, big shot taken there by Toure. Ball hits the defender and goes out. Their finishing has been a bit poor. And now, big shot taken there by Toure. And trying to build here something, Iran. Mustafa. Great cross and trying to score. Something it on. Asking for a goal. Let's see. I think the referee. There are some protests going on. They're, they're asking if it was a goal or not. Yes, it was a goal. The referee has given it as a goal. So it's 8 0 now, Iran. Eight goals to the good, Iran. All one-way traffic at the moment. Giving an opportunity now to the fringe players, Iran. Eight goal cushion. Number nine, Amin, the striker, is coming in. Masood has been really good as well. Since he's come on, the captain for Mali, the goalkeeper, <laughs> he's had a very poor day. Again, Dembele trying something. Hard shot taken, goes out. On the scorecard, but unfortunately, Mali is still a goal. Eight goals down. Iran again now trying. To, that was the last man, last defender. Could have easily crossed him. And the new goalkeeper for Iran making a sh quick, sharp save. Mustafa. Number 10, Reza for Iran now trying to build something. Giving the ball away. Mali starting from the back. Again, number nine, Keita, that man, he's been on the pitch the whole time now. He has not been substituted out. Need to be supremely fit to be on the ground for the 12, 20 minutes so far. There's still 10 minutes left in this game. Mali, 10 minutes, can they bring up something? Can they put some goals and give themselves some confidence for the next games? No, they cannot. The goalkeeper for Iran this time, number one, Mahdi. Again, beautiful save. Well, there you have it. A change of goalkeeper, not bringing any luck for Iran. Mali, on the other hand, has scored one goal. They still have to score seven to come level with Iran. But that one goal will give them a lot of confidence and a lot of consolation as well. Toure now has been fouled. The referee gives a free kick. And can we see a comeback, a miracle comeback from Mali? Iran has been very good in defense. I think they've just been a little casual 
since they came back from the break. Big shot there. High and wide. Good in defense. I think they've just been a little casual since they came back from the break. Big shot. Trying to waste time. Again, you would do that. Conserve your energy when you've got an eight-goal cushion. And a counter-attack there. Trying to build something from the back with the goalkeeper. Mustafa trying to keep that ball in. Take a quick free kick. Ball now with Raza. Back to Mustafa and now back with Raza again. Number 18, Masood. He has been a live wire as well since he's come in. And Masood has a shot. Tries to take one instead. The ball with number three, Mustafa. And Masood has a shot. Tries to take one instead. The ball. Mali won. Well, that eight goal cushion is maintained by Iran. It just took them two minutes. To counter the goal that Mali had scored. Nine goals. Mali has a lot of thinking to do once this game is over. They've already taken the first points in the first game. But what they don't want happening is them losing momentum. Because a nine goal defeat can dent your confidence quite a bit. Again, number nine now for Iran. Amin back into the game. Takes it back to the goalkeeper. Man number 10, Raza, who scored the goal as well. Missed good opportunities. And a good save as well from the Mali goalkeeper. Number one, Kuliboli, their captain. He's had a tough day in the office. Conceded nine goals as a goalkeeper. Good tackle there. The referee waves play on. Number four, Dembele. He's back on the field and he's making an instant impact. But the goalkeeper saves it. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. What can Mali do in this next eight minutes? Can they score some consolation goals? Dembele again with the ball. He has been really good on the field. One of the bright points for Mali. Takes a shot. The ball goes out. So still 9-1. And Mali with a lot to do. Number 18 for Iran. Masood. He's been really good as well. And as we say that, he's been substituted out. Reserve, they want to keep him fresh for the next game. Hassan comes in, number 19. One-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, number 11. That is consolation goal number two. Kane from Mali scoring goal number two. One on one with the goalkeeper number 11. That is consolation goal. But a very good goal from Kane. And with seven minutes on the clock, what Mali would want to do is just decrease the deficit as much as they can. Number eight now for Iran. Their captain Abbas. Brilliant tackle and the referee waves play on. They were looking for a foul but that wasn't there. That was a very good tackle. Clean tackle. By Abbas. Again trying to build something from the back. Hassan with the ball. With Raza. Raza on the left has been very good. Nutmegs the defenders. Very good football there. Back pass to him. Can he put it in the back of the net? You bet they can. Number 19, Hassan. Very good football there. Back pass to him. Can he put it in the back of the net? You bet. Pass. To number 19, Hassan was pinpoint. And the finishing was beautiful. 10 goals to the good now, Iran. 10-2. That eight gold cushion that they had is retained. 
and in futsal that is one of the beautiful goals you can score crossing it in a through pass from left into the right and the forward doing the rest there is always a room for surprises in this beautiful game and as we say there is a beautiful goal from number 11 kanik always a room for surprises in this beautiful game and as and with that left foot putting it in the back of the net mali 3 iran 10 mali will be highly disappointed they've actually conceded 10 goals because their strikers have done a good job to score three themselves trying to build something again now from the back mali 4 minutes still left on the clock 4 four, four and a half minutes still left on the clock here they want to try and get maybe a couple of more goals the ball goes out for a goal kick Iran 10, Mali 3. Four minutes left on the clock. Can Keita Kane and his team stage some sort of a comeback? Iran just losing a little bit of the gas and giving Ir Mali some openings here. Kane, Kane has been brilliant in front. Again, pinpoint accuracy with the pass. He takes a shot. The ball goes out. Kane. Kane has been brilliant in front. Again, pinpoint accuracy with the pass. He takes scoring ten goals in this game with the last three minutes now. Mali replacing Kane with Bok makes sense now. Kane has been their best player on the pitch along with Dembele. You want to keep him fresh for the next games. We have a lot of games coming up today. we even have the qualifiers and the knockouts coming up as well so stay tuned with us here for the corporate championship cup and as we say that the de defensive mistake huge defensive mistake by raza with us here for the corporate championship cup and as we say that the de defensive mistake cleans up with a simple tap in so four goals for mali iran 10 mali 4 and now raza has been swapped with another another player i think he was a bit tired he apologized as quickly as the goal was scored by mali but as we say that he's back on the picture again and now mali on the attack still 2 minutes left could they score 5 scoring 5 against this iran team would be a statement as well they might have conceded 10 scoring 5 against this iran team would be a statement as well they might definitely missing subhan in the goal he was brilliant in the first half keeping a clean sheet in the first half all the goals that mali has scored has come in the second half referee calls for an offside that throw not allowed they have to be behind the line when the goalkeeper throws the ball out for a goal kick or goal throw and now mali start again one and a half minute left takes a shot hits the cross bar very unlucky there mali could have easily been their fifth goal and again trying to take a shot Toure fakes it once twice gives the ball to Diama and that was a very very good save by the Iran goalkeeper number 1 Mahdi another opportunity and another save by Mahdi so he's picked up his game after conceding four he's trying to take a quick corner there poor corner very poor corner indeed and Uh, coach the mali coach on the sidelines absolutely losing the plot he shoots the ball from a halfway line there was no goalkeeper the goal post was empty 
Iran could have easily been 11 up, but the ball goes wide. That would have been a bit embarrassing for the goalkeeper having come halfway down the pitch. Now number 11 again, that man Kane, he has been brilliant. And as we say that, with that last shot, the referee blows the whistle. A very one-sided game indeed. Iran, Rafsanjan 10, Mali 4. And Iran take the points in their second game. We're here at Field 1, Field A of the La Liga Academy. And we'll welcome you back in a couple of minutes for the third game of the day. Stay with us.
goal kick here for Monaco, trying to build from the back. Nicely worked to Daniel once again. He'll be the one to keep an eye on. Nicely chipped towards the box, working it back. Brilliant ball movement here from Monaco. Trying to go for that low cross was Daniel Gonsalves there, but nicely blocked away. It's going to be a test for the Irish. Two top sides taking on each other. They had a very convincing victory in their opening game against Nigeria over the Irish. And now it's the big number 11 down the left flank. Home Aldini. What a name. He's a big unit, moves very swiftly. Ir the Irish in their national colors of orange, white, and green. Monaco in all red. Fonction Publique. And they're trying to build from the back. They use their keeper quite frequently to create opportunities create mismatches and you can see he's striding forward with a lot of confidence has a shot and goal and that just fizzes past the right upright what a moment that would have been if the keeper had scored the opening goal of the game the Monaco defense was backing off him and he said I'll have a dip lovely through ball by Daniel down the left flank but just going beyond Hughie Manfredi there have to man mark Daniel Gonzalez. He is a brilliant player. Nicely headed on there, but off the Monaco defender claiming a goal kick. And I think they'll get it. Yes, they will. Nope, a bit of confusion. He's like, leave the ball, mate. Get back into the game. Arno Sbarato, the keeper for Fonction Publique. And we have Oen in goal for the Irish. Expect this to be a tactical battle here. Both sides very skillful. A lot of off the ball movement. And their finishing is top notch. Daniel Gonsalves on the ball once again. He's their true playmaker. They rely a lot on, on him for creativity and mismatches. And we keep an eye on number 10. Andrea Caschio as well. He's a very skillful forward player as well. So a lot of technical ability as you'd expect from the Frenchman. And Ireland will need to show some resolve. Need to show some quality in their finishing. Give and go. Try to work it there. But the Irish back line will show some resolve. Need to show some quality in their finishing. Give and go. Try to Gav, they're getting in a bit of a tangle with Daniel. That's going to be the premier battle, number eight of Synergy. And number 18 of the Fonction Publique, all in red. And with those pink boots there, as you can see. Just working the ball around, looking for openings. And Oin has stepped out, as always, for the Irish, creating a mismatch. Work towards Gav. To Niall here, back to Gav. And Homa Aldini, what a name that is. Bit of tongue in cheek in there. Gav, the high flying left back, left winger. So the Irish content to build the ball from the back, pass it around, make the Frenchman stretch a little bit. Nicely attempted through ball. One on one with the keeper and that's a top save. That would have been very, very close. But Arno Sparato for the Monaco back line. The GK doing really well there. Outside of the foot cross but straight at Oin in the Irish goal. Four minutes have absolutely flown by. No clear chances just yet for the Frenchman. And the rolling subs are going into the game. So, oh, bit of a miscontrol, and that's 1 0 for Monaco. A howler at the back. Subs are going into the game. So, oh, bit of a miscontrol, and that's 1 0 for Monaco. Sit away. 1 0. Fonction publique. Five minutes gone by. So the Irish are on the back foot.
they need to respond Gav on the ball, playing it around with the back line once again. Niall, the one who had miscontrolled there and gifted that goal to the team from Monaco in all red. They'd have to forget about it. There's plenty of action still to come. Plenty of opportunities will be created. Oin stepping out of his goal once again. They're adding that extra man onto the pitch. Through ball attempted. Nice control there, was it under a bit of pressure? And Daniel Gonzalez once again showing his physical prowess. Brilliant control. It's really hard to post up with him as they say in basketball when his back is to the defender. Hard to dislodge him. Speculative strike, Owen bats it down and controls it nicely. Tries to get Gav on the ball, Gonzalez with a one-time shot. But it just fizzes away past left upright. It's been a good start for the Frenchman once again. Andrea Castillo with the goal. Off the howler from number 10 of Synergy, Niall. And of course, in futsal, you are allowed to throw the ball in as a keeper. Putting him under pressure. Good work there from the Frenchman. He's the one on the ball right now. Trying to play make from the back. There he is. And number seven is Sieran. Looking up, looking for open players. You need a lot of movement off the ball. Trying that lofted pass towards that left flank, but just a bit errant. Sear and couldn't get across to it. So they've definitely designated Niall to be the one playmaking from the back line, looking for those raking balls across to the left flank. And it's the Frenchman on the ball. They've been content to just sit in, content to play with limited possession. They're very, very stout defensive side, very tough to break down. Irish are clearly realizing that. Hence the use of their keeper as a libero. Ball given away in midfield once again. Good defense by Monaco. And now they get the opportunity to rebuild from the back. Number three on screen yard to your right is Lucas Mariani. Daniel Gonzalez on the ball once again. Look at that speed, look at that dribbling.
And that is the goal from Morocco. 1 0 in Southfield. Oh, they've lost possession once again, and he scuffed the shot. That was an opportunity there for Michael Farina. But scuffs his shot straight at the keeper. Opportunity here once again on his left foot. Trying to work an opening. But has to track back. That was a guilt-edged opportunity here. And this time it's Sankey on the ball. Tries a shot with his left foot. Bouncing off the defenders. Content to just work the ball around here. There's that man, Michael Farina. He had a huge opportunity. That was not availed. This time played into the box. Chance for a shot. He goes for it first time. The Cedric Moraleda. But scuffs it away. So, the Monaco side have had two very, very good opportunities to get shots on target, but haven't taken the chances. And will they be made to pay? That is the question. Gav trying to get on the ball. Some rough stuff there, and the referee has called up the Frenchman. So, a bit of relief. Trying to build here quickly, though. Niall getting on the ball, but the ref says, hang on, mate. Do it on my whistle. Into the box once again. Back heel. And nicely intercepted just in the nick of time. Lofted ball down the right flank. Just cleared it. Got it out of harm's way. So the, the Irish have controlled possession. But not made much use of it. This time once again trying a back heel. Sh speculative shot from the right flank from Michael Farina. He's really gunning for a goal now. Powering through the Irish back line. But Niall just about cleans it up. Oh, Maldini will have time to get his foot down on the ball now. Gav, the chief playmaker here for Synergy. Taking some risks at the back there. No look pass and a rough tackle there. And a booking immediately for the number eight of Monaco. Referee once again telling them to just hang on a bit. That was Cedric Laudizi getting the booking there for Monaco. Nice ball here. One, two. Chance for a shot. And they've equalized. A beautiful goal by the Irish. What a game we're having here at field day at the La Liga Academy in Dubai. The Irish tying it all up. It's been a war of attrition here for both sides. Very good defensively. Very few openings in attack. And that half has absolutely flown by. It's 1-1 at the break. We'll be right back in just a couple of minutes for the second half between Fonction Publique and Synergy Recruitment. Stay with us.
Should I be like in this shape? Where's the girl? Right now is the perfect moment. Yes. With no player, I'm just gonna say how many degrees are we? Hello, hello. Is someone listening right there? We have time right now. Can we start recording? I'm ready just to say some words. Yes, just start, start, start. Yes. Now? and welcome to the second day of the World's Corporate Champions Cup. We are super ready today. It's 30 degrees. We're in the beautiful city of Dubai. We're going to have more interviews today. So I want you guys to stay tuned and don't forget to tune the moremojo.com on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you. I was like, where are you? Where's my... Let's, let's be here in the all set for the second half between Fonction Public of Monaco and Synergy Recruitment from Ireland. Synergy in the national colors of Ireland in orange, white, and green, and Monaco. Function public of Monaco in the classic all red. It's tied 1 1 at the break. A late goal by the Irish has equalized affairs. Homa Aldini on the ball. Nice through ball towards Gav. He's the, arguably the most skillful player on the Irish side. Not wearing his trademark headband today but still hard to miss. Trying to work a given goal, bit of a risky pass there, but nicely done in the end by Niall, lofting it towards Gav, who's on the right wing there, given as a foul on Cedric Lodizzi. The battle of the number eights there, very hard to miss the tall, burly, bald center back for Monaco. Now Gav on the ball, off the set piece. Just works it by behind. It's Niall who's always pinned in his own half as the sweeper. And Owen Duffy out there, the keeper. He's been used a lot as well as a playmaker. So that dual playmaker role being established here by the Irish. Gav gives it away. Bit of a low shot towards that right upright. Safely kicked away by the Monaco keeper Arno Sparato. No, pardon me. It is Arno, in fact. So a corner for the Irish, played quickly, and he steps in there very efficiently. Nicely read, nicely done. 13 minutes to go in this game, 15 minute halves each. And it's been very tight. Nip and tuck consistently. Not a lot of openings here for both sides they've been content to respect each other's technique and quality Nile trying to build from the back give and go once again home Aldini on the ball down the left flank squares it and just in time just in time the Monaco back line responds and clears it away nicely worked move there by the Irish 
but read expertly at the crucial moment. Home Aldeni to take the corner then. Plays it all the way back to Owen Duffy in the goal. Has a fair bit of acreage to get out to. Paul getting on the ball, getting some action in the game as well. We've seen the likes of Home Aldini, Niall and Gav as well as Owen Duffy, the principal starters. Sierran as well has gone a lot of game time. There's some space down the right flank with Niall making the run. But it's going to roll out for a goal kick. So it's 1-1 with about 12 minutes to go. Trying to build up from the back with Daniel Gonzalez. Nicely worked to the left flank. Now he's playing as a bit of a playmaker. Very interesting tactical shift here from Monaco. Oh, trying to do that Marseille roulette there was Andrea Castillo. Didn't quite pull it off just yet, but he has the technique and quality to do so. Trying that through ball to the left flank. You can see Sankey and Homaldini getting a breather. Of course, you do have rolling subs in 5-on-5 five five futsal. It's a very physically demanding game. And it's right around midday here in Dubai. So the temperatures are heating up as well as Daniel right at the center circle. Nice move down the left flank. Dribbles away from Niall. Squared. Shot at goal and a brilliant save. And he's tucked it in this time off the rebound. Monaco. Believe it, off the Irish defender, right into the top corner. A howler if there ever was one. And now, the Frenchmen have the lead. Scuff shot over the French goalkeeper. Ten minutes to go in the game. An own goal the difference. And the Irish will certainly be ruining their luck. Both goals came off. Errors at the back. Gav having a shot from distance, but that's nowhere near. Corner for the Irish. Niall on the ball to the left flank. Has a low shot off the upright. It was a tight angle. It was ambitious. But we've seen those sneak in in the past. So the Frenchmen are living dangerously at the back, perhaps getting a bit tired. Christophe Dumoulin plays it to his keeper. Now just putting his foot on the ball, taking the sting out of the game, so to speak. Nice ball to Daniel Gonzalez. He can square up. Shot and goal, but this time it's gone off from Hugie Manfredi for a corner. The Irish are heaving a bit here. Monaco are building up ahead of steam. Can they get that two-goal cushion here off the corner? It's going to be Hugie himself to take it. Low cross to Daniel Gonzalez at the edge of the box. Nowhere to turn. And the Irish rip it off him. Down the left flank then. This is an opportunity on the counter. A shot over the keeper. Keeper. Yes, it is a corner. So the Irish are heading back. Low cross, quick cross, but the keeper was alert to it. Now Daniel Gonzalez has room, has time. Step over, but beautiful tackle there from Home Aldini. Brilliant defending. This game has stepped up a notch in its tempo. Andrea trying to get that through ball to Hugi. And Owen Duffy steps in for the Irish. It'll be a goal kick. Plenty of encouragement from the Monaco bench. They're wearing the famous colors of AS Monaco, as we all know, the top flight club in Ligue 1 of the French League. Perennial champions. Produced legends of the likes of Thierry Henry, David Trezeguet have represented their colors as well. And they'll need some kind of inspiration like that as well to get the equalizer. It's been a very tight game. Seven and a half minutes to go. Huge Manfredi has a long distance shot. But well away from the goal. Ambitious. 
but that can certainly pay off in 5-on-5 five five futsal. Oh, and Duffy gets the ball out quickly to home Aldini, trying to create down the right flank. But a Monaco player has gone down there, looks a bit serious. It's Christophe Dumont. He seems to be in. In fact, some theatrics there from Christoph, but he definitely does look to be in a bit of pain. And we need the medical staff to get out there ASAP. He can't go off. Don't risk it. Need to get the stretcher out there. Meanwhile, it gives an opportunity to get some liquids down for the Irish. Perhaps try to reconfigure the game plan take a bit of risks maybe they'll allow the keeper Owen Duffy to step out even more create an extra man in the midfield but Christoph Dumel is certainly struggling and has to be carried off by the physio and the coaches hopefully he'll be fine for the remainder of the tournament J.C. Brancato, the number six, checking in with him, providing a helping shoulder. That's good to see. Wonderful team spirit there from Fonction Publique. The game will resume in the meanwhile. Six minutes and 24 seconds to go. And Daniel will just hand it over to the Irish. Over to you and Owen Duffy. Home Aldini trying to create some movement out there. Gav on the ball as well. Gavin O'Keefe. Oh, Maldini works it. And they've equalized the Irish. Beautiful goal there. And they have tied it all up. 2-2 with six minutes to go. What a game we've had here. The Irish versus the French. It's been an absolute thriller. And now Daniel Gonsalves has a shot. Just fizzes past the left upright there. That was a bit of an opening there. Under six minutes to play. Who will get the game winner? Who will break it open? Niall right there at the back. Once again, that two-man pivot with the keeper as well. So they're playing quite defensively for my liking are the Irish. Perhaps willing to stick to a draw or in Duffy. Trying to find the opening down the left flank, but the striker hadn't made the move. And the possession is over to the men from the Principality of Monaco. Lucas Magnani taking the kick in. Yuji Manfredi, he's been quite active. He's ran around a fair bit. Trying that low cross, finds Daniel Gonzalez working the ball, posting up to Niall. Crossing it in towards the keeper, but Owen Duffy quickly gets it away from harm. Corner for the Frenchman, Andrea Casquio to take it. Low cross fired into the box, going away for a corner once again. Fender there. And the referee insisting that we have to take it just from the right spot. Daniel Gonzalez taking responsibility for the set piece. Oh, that was an opportunity, could have volleyed it into the net. Just couldn't execute it. It was coming at some serious pace. And now the Irish will get time on the ball. Precious moments, precious minutes here. Oh, Maldini, he's been a standout performer for the Irish today. One, two, give and go. Down the left flank, has a shot, but safely kept away at the near post. Andrea Cascio getting on the ball now. And good to see Christophe Dumoulin fully fit and back in the action. Daniel Gonzalez stepping on the ball there. Gavin O'Keefe squaring the ball. Shot and there it is. The Irish take the lead.
Three minutes to go, and they've taken the unlikely lead. 3-2 to Synergy. Under three minutes to play for the French to get an equalizer. What a game we've had here at the La Liga Academy Field Day. A bit of an upset, if you can call it. That man, Daniel Gonzalez, miscontrols it. He's had a quiet game so far. They needed a big performance from him. And he hasn't quite managed to deliver as they would have liked. Once again, those critical errors. Gavin O'Keefe, brilliant footwork, gets the foul, precious seconds. Ticking away. Two minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the game. The Irish have shown a lot of resolve, a lot of heart, a lot of patience. And in the end, it may just pay off taking that late lead. Thanks to brilliant work there from that man, Gavin O'Keefe. Creating an opportunity that nobody could miss. Once again on the ball here. Niall boxing away his defender. Now they're just playing key, key ball, working it to the keeper. Owen Duffy have to be very precise. Home Aldini has had a brilliant game as well. One, two, shot at goal, but this time it fizzes away. Past the right upright. Just about 90 seconds to go. The keeper racing after the ball. They have no time to spare. Can the Frenchman find a late equalizer? Throws the ball to Daniel Gonzalez, number 18, with those pink boots on the ball. Working it to Dumoulin, back heel, home Aldini cleans up, Oin Duffy clears the ball. Out to the French keeper. Once again, they look to rebuild, once again, they look to equalize. Working it to the right, but Oin Duffy has the ball, under a minute to play. He's hanging on for dear life. The Irish are hanging on for dear life. And that is the end of the game. A massive upset here as Synergy recruitment from Ireland have beat the firm favorites, Fonction Publique of Monaco. A late winner. And they've got the precious three points. What a game we've had. Fist pumps all around. You can see the Irish players absolutely delighted. What a win it's been for them. They had to dig deep. They had to claw back. They were under the gun for large parts of the game. And in the end, they got the winning goal. 3-2, it finishes for the Irish then. We'll be right back for the next game. Did you look at the camera? Bonjour à tous, nous savons ici à notre douzième jour de World Corporate Champions Cup et nous avons ici avec autre joueur. Allô, bonjour, ça va bien Bonjour, ça va, super, un peu chaud, mais ça va. Quel est votre nom, quel est votre pays et quelle est votre entreprise Alors moi, c'est Arnaud Barato, euh, on joue pour Monaco, la principauté de Monaco et on est l'équipe du gouvernement princier. Voilà, Parfait. Parfait, et comment est-ce que, comment vous sentez, vous ici, à Dubaï, représentant votre pays on est très heureux d'être ici pour représenter Monaco. On est très bien accueillis à Dubaï. Franchement, c'est génial. L'organisation est top. Donc euh, déjà, merci à tout le monde. On remercie aussi euh, ben, notre, euh, notre gouvernement qui nous soutient, euh, qui nous a permis d'être ici. Et puis, euh, on, est, on est vraiment heureux parce qu'on a battu les dur pour venir ici. Il y a beaucoup de bonnes équipes dans nos, nos compétitions. Donc, on est fiers de les représenter tous. 
quels sont vos pronostics pour le tournement ah ben, J'aimerais bien gagner. <rire> J'espère qu'on va gagner. On, est pas... on a gagné un match, on vient d'en perdre un. C'était un peu difficile, c'était très chaud. Mais bon, on ne perd pas espoir et je pense qu'on a une bonne équipe, on a une très bonne, très bonne cohésion. On est vraiment, on s'éclate entre nous, donc c'est cool. On peut faire quelque chose, sinon les Irlandais très forts. Hein. Parfait, merci beaucoup. Merci à vous. Merci. Welcome back. We have another player in another team. How are you today? What's your name? What's your country? And what's the company that you work for? Abdesamad Chave. I am from Morocco. And the company, I'm, uh, I'm uh, the International Foundation for uh, Hubara Reservation and Nature, ECWP, Rinico. Perfect. And how do you feel to be here right now in Dubai representing Morocco? How does, what does that mean to you? Yeah. Uh, that means to me the fear to uh, uh, take this uh, warm up with uh, this uh, play up with this uh, Moroccan uh, t-shirt. So it's uh, a pleasure for us, uh, everybody, to be in here in Dubai. Thank you, everybody. I'm okay. Amazing! And Thank I'm, you. So I'm, I'm so happy for the win. Uh, yesterday we have uh, equal one one, and uh, today we, Alhamdulillah, we win. And uh, next time, inshallah, we will make uh, our uh, uh, effort to win again and to pass the next uh, round, inshallah, quarter final. Thank you. Shukran. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Shukran. Welcome back to this game between Saudi Saab and Switzerland. We're here at the World Corporate Championship Cup, brought to you by FIFCO at the La, Li La Liga Academy in Dubai Sports City, right next to the ICC Cricket Academy. A lot of hustle bustle today. You can have a look, kids playing in the background. It's hot, it's humid. But these players have been on the top of their game. We've had amazing matches so far. And the action will continue. This time it's Saudi going from left to right. On the field at the moment. Number 11, Sultan. Their goalkeeper, the Hrawi. Number 7, Muhammad Al-Julufi. Beg your pardon, the goalkeeper is Muhammad. Just slowly taking their time, trying to build an attack from the back. Very quick passing. 
Through ball, chipped in the air and very close. Almost the perfect start for Saudi. Ammar, number eight, missing that open goal post. And that would have been a dream start for Saudi against the Switzerland side. First minute of the game, very close. There is a free ball. And again, good goalkeeping and good defending. Number eight. Number 18 for Switzerland. Aliun making that save. That was very close. Number seven, Mohammed Al Julufi coming in for that cross. I'm missing the ball completely. And Saudi is very unlucky to be goalless at the moment. It could have easily been 1 0 up. This time, Switzerland starting from the back, taking their time. Surveying the field, number 10, Hassan. Number four, that Mehdi. Almost getting in a good tackle there. Another shot, and this time, well deserved goal there for Saudi. First goal for Ammar. He went very close in the first minute, but this time, not missing the mark. Up against the Swiss. Switzerland Vitol 0, Saab 1. And now Switzerland in their red and white iconic shirt going from right to left with all the work to do. Again, quick pass here. Number 7 there, Pierre. Trying again from the back there. Ammar went very close in the first minute and then scoring that crucial goal. Now Saudi 1-0 up in the first two and a half minutes of the game. Again, they're very patient. Take their time. Number seven, Mohammed Al Jalufi, their playmaker, right in the middle of the action. They're frustrating the Swiss. You can see they're already huffing and puffing the midfielders. They're letting them play their little three-man, one-touch game. You see this happen a lot in the training field. Just conserving their energy, not putting too much pressure the Swiss midfielders and defenders at the moment. Number seven, Pierre, just watching that ball. Very interesting tactics here by Saudi, just keeping the ball in their half. And a foul call, but not given. Switzerland finally get the ball back. Try to make... Mohammed Al Jalufi again gets the ball, intercepts it, a quick pass. Trying to find the goal scorer, Ammar, but missing the mark. Ball goes out for a free kick. The goalkeeper, number one, Andrew, with a cap on his head. We've seen that a lot in the Premiership with the sun beating down at the goalkeeper. It's very difficult to spot the ball. Inter interesting choice of color, though. Green cap. The referee waves play on and Andrew has done extremely well to block that ball. The Saudi players protesting. They had a man down. The referee waved play on and Switzerland were in their right to continue. Very close. Now the referee has given a yellow card to number four Mahdi. Well the linesman had waved play on, but the main referee has now pulled the ball back, given a yellow card. Very interesting decision there. Mahdi again on the ball now. He's given the ball away. Number 11, Sultan for Saudi, the goalkeeper. 
could have easily blundered there but kept his composure again starting from the back we see that a lot in this game the ball going back it's not a defensive move it very much be an attacking move sometimes it gives the midfielder a lot of space to target their forwards very good ball control there the goalkeeper rushes out and kicks the ball away that could have been extremely close ball going out for a free kick now switzerland in the saudi half they've not tested the goalkeeper so far number 1 mohammed has not had a lot to do number 9 for switzerland ball going out again the pace of the game just mellowing down a little bit number 1 mohammed again with the ball the goalkeeper and the two defenders in the back like to keep the ball with them for as long as possible before they can find a slot number 7 al jalufi again said he's the playmaker he decides the way the game progresses and there he is exactly on cue trying to go one on one with the defender good defending there by mahdi running with the ball on the right wing giving the ball away now jalufi again and andrew the goalkeeper does really well so saudi sa putting a lot of pressure on the switch side a corner now for saudi sab quickly taken the ball with jalufi he's been all over the place takes a shot and misses the target completely goes over again saudi sab putting a lot of pressure on the switzerland side alion right at the back number 10 ehsan aliun again ehsan back to andrew back to ehsan saudi sa putting pressure on the defenders ball going back now number 3 hatam and he's given the ball away saudi on the counter attack this is a one on one situation very very close Number nine, Badr giving the ball to the striker instead of trying for the goal, and unfortunately the ball is kicked away from the target. Number six, Faisal missing it completely again. Number nine, Badr with the ball, and that's a foul call. Good refereeing from the linesman. Badr has just walked into the field and is making an instant impact very quick on the ball. The referee giving him the instructions on how he wants him to proceed. Some eye contact between Badr and the forward. again interesting tactics here saudi taking the ball all the way back to the goalkeeper now number 18 abdul aziz al qahtani on the left wing interesting they calling for a foul that was a big tackle we'll have to see what was the referee's decision there yes he's given a free kick strong hard tackle on abdul aziz qahtani and now again badr with the ball takes a direct kick the goalkeeper has fumbled and saudi saab have gone 2-1 two, two goals up and abdul aziz al qahtani he had 
taken that foul, gotten the free kick, and now scores the second goal. So Saudi Saab very much on top of this game in the first 10 minutes. Andrew again with the ball, trying to start something. Another mistake here. But the ball goes to the right wing. Only four people on the field covering this area. The passing has to be pinpoint. Trying a chip there. The goalkeeper was off his line. But he was very quick to respond there. So again, Saudi on the attack from the left wing this time. Badr, Kahtani, both of them been very good since they've come on the field. Number five right at the back, Hassan. From what I can... From what I can see, almost all the players on the pitch are now new players. From the four that started the game for Saudi Saab. So fresh legs. The referee says that's a bit of a dive. Get up quickly. Again, off the line, the goalkeeper. A chip attempted. He still keeps a clean sheet. Number five. Hassan. Intimidating figure in the field. There's a big mistake from Badr. A shot taken there by number 19, Kristoff. But he's not even tested a goalkeeper. That's a poor miss. Switzerland looking to come back into this game. But so far, Mohammed, the goalkeeper, keeping a clean sheet. And their finishing has not helped them. But they're trying to do something spectacular, giving the ball away. Very lucky not to concede here, Saudi. Again, their passing has been really good. Badr, since he's come on the field, live wire, dynamic in the midfield and forward. And as we say that, very good ball control there by number six, Faisal. Oh, eventually gives the ball away and he's very frustrated with his players. He was looking for some support. <laughs> and the ball goes back. Familiar way. For Saudi to work this game. This time Badr now on the left wing. Quick changes in formation as well. Now we see Faisal. Who's come back to his familiar left back position. Hassan and Faisal have been very solid in the back. The one mistake coming from Badr. But Switzerland not able to capitalize. And another mistake, almost. The pass not weighted as well as the keeper, Mohammed wanted it to. Could have easily given the ball away to Hassan from Switzerland. Silvio Hassan at the back for Switzerland, putting pressure on the Saudi team. Hassan has come forward. al Qahtani to Hassan. And Badr was almost there. Very good football and good tactics. They start from the back again. Quick on the break. Shot taken. The goalkeeper saves it, but the ball is back in play. Kahtani with the ball now. Gives the ball now to Faisal. Faisal to Kahtani again. And a great interception there by Hassan from Switzerland. Number six takes a shot, Silvio. The ball hits the defender and goes out for a goal kick. <coughs> Quick substitution taking place now. Number 11, Sultan for Hassan. Quick corner taken, given the ball away. Poor from Switzerland. And the referee calls for the halftime whistle. So, goal mark to goal mark action in the first half. Saudi Saab have done well. To keep their two goal cushion. Switzerland could have easily been one goal to the good. We'll come back after the break for the second half.
Well, welcome back to the second half. We're live on Sportsi, the broadcast partner for the World Corporate Champions Cup, brought to you by Fifco, the event partner Watch Mojo, and Switzerland Vitol versus Saudi Saab. The score: two goals for the Saudi Saab team, nil for Switzerland as they start again. This time from left to right. And immediately give the ball away to the Saudi team, who, in their familiar fashion, will now take their time, keep the ball in their half, and start again. Number eight, Ammar. Ammar, very good football there, one on one with the goalkeeper. He's keep kept the ball in the play. And now Andrew saving that ball from going into the back of the net. Number 11, Sultan now with the ball. Ball going back to the goalkeeper. Sultan Faisal, number 6. With the ball now, Sultan number 11. <laughs> and again, trying that quick pass there. Number 19, Gahrawi. Coming into the play. And Saudi have started this half very well. They were a bit slow in the first half. Take their time to play into their tactics. Very interesting approach in the second half now from Saudi. They've given the ball away. Switzerland, can they make something of it? Starting from the back now. Number four, Mahdi. He's been the key player for them. They've got the ball. Alioun from the middle coming in. And again gives the ball away. Now back to the Saudi players. Number six, Faisal with the ball. Number eight, Ammar keeps the ball in play for Saudi. And now the ball back to Gahrawi. Back to the goalkeeper, Muhammad. Number 11 on the right, Sultan. Number eight on the left, Ammar. Intimidating figure of Ammar as a defender. Muhammad, the goalkeeper, now with the ball again. <coughs> keeping an eye on the proceedings. And now, very familiar approach this from the Saudi team. They just keep the ball in their half. Trying to frustrate the Swiss defenders and midfielders before they can find an opening whether through a pinpoint pass or a chip there we have it on the break now number seven quick pass there that's number 10 and again a good good save there with his legs this time closing in the gap that was a tight angle but Andrew has done really well to save that shot from Bamasak of Saudi, number 10. He's into the play as well. Did not feature in the first half. But now has done extremely well. Hit the ball from the outside of his boot. But the goalkeeper, Andrew, for Switzerland. Ensuring there's no more damage. Still, Switzerland. Two goals up. With 11 minutes left to play now. We're into the last quarter of the game. Good defending there by Saudi. Now the counter-attack starts from the middle. Number seven, Muhammad Al-Julufi. Again, giving the ball away. This time, Mahdi now with the ball. Number four, trying to find the forward. Number 19, Christoph, but unable to do so. And Saudi start again from the back. It's been a very good game and very good tactics from Saudi as well. They've been very composed at the back. From what I can remember, there was just one opportunity. Number 10 now for Saudi. Bamasak with the ball, asking for a foul. Again, good defending there by Mahdi. And number 11, Usama for Switzerland. <coughs> ball goes out for a free kick. Mahdi swaps Pierre. Number seven comes in. And number five, Ridha, coming in as well. 
looking for a quick pass goes back to andrew the goalkeeper <coughs> trying to find pierre at that time goes out for a free kick you can see even the players asking to be substituted it's really hot number 9 badr comes in the live wire and makes an instant impact takes the ball away very good ball control there by number 10 bamasa keeping the ball on his feet again saudi going back now badr switches to the right number 11 sultan now on the left al jalufi the playmaker from the middle controlling the game nine more minutes nine more minutes for the saudi sam team to hang on and get the three points and switzerland have to take the ball away get make an impact they've not had a lot of possession today in this game all the possessions with the saudi team two goals to the good saudi sab badr from the right bamasak from the left very good pass and again a good save almost through his legs but andrew knew where the ball was and switzerland very lucky to be just two goals down so far badr number 9 badr been absolutely fantastic on the right hand side of the pitch for the saudi sam team switzerland now must be feeling the heat it's 11:30 in the morning it's peak heat time and even though this is just a small pitch with five players on it it takes a lot out of you high action high paced game this one we are here at la liga academy for the world championship corporate championship being held here in sports city in dubai get very good football there good passing good connection between the two number 10 bamasak and number 9 badr al jalufi takes a shot hits the inside of the crossbar very unlucky he has deserved a goal mohammed al jalufi he has played extremely well Again, the ball now with Pierre takes a weak-looking shot. The goalkeeper makes a save. Seven minutes left now on the clock. Saudi Sab to Switzerland. Vitol zero. They can still stage a comeback here. Seven minutes is a long time in this game. Just have to score one goal to get that momentum back. the ball with the goalkeeper now mohammed number 1 so far keeping a clean sheet bamasa he's been in the, at the second half and has been the creative force behind this saudi attack again and again badr on the other hand very quick on the ball very quick off the ball as well gets into position very quickly takes a shot and is blocked very good defending there that tackle a bit out of frustration number 5 reza taking the ball off him and then out of retaliation badr with the quick tackle he's been taken off trying to keep him calm get in a quick substitution now al jalufi and he has put the ball in the back al qahtani who comes in for badr is in the right place at the right time outside boot taps it in and saudi sab now have a three goal cushion the game must be very much done and dusted here with 5 minutes left on the clock saudi vitol has a lot to do to come back into this game again give the ball away bamasa chasing the ball now with the goalkeeper hasan has walked into the side as well number 5 the intimidating figure of hasan on the left wing bamasa very good on each side of the wing he's played on both right and the left side 
takes a shot there Hassan now Saudi very familiar again going back Pamasak with the header almost getting that fourth goal very good from Saudi good ploy there a cross coming in from the right the forward Abdul Aziz Al Qahtani was there but just couldn't get his head wrapped around the ball Switzerland making some changes as well number five Ridda coming in number 10 Ehsan as well and now one on one with the goalkeeper he looks frustrated Gahrawi had an opportunity to score a goal for his team but Andrew the goalkeeper has done really well a strong tackle there strong tackle on number five Rida from number five Hassan the battle of the fives on the left side of the field Saudi Saab now again their familiar approach keeping the ball at the back for as long as possible frustrating the Swiss players on the pitch you can see Pierre and that's what they do once they do that they get those gaps they get that break number 19 Gahrawi a bit slow he has been a little bit poor since he's come on the field had two very good opportunities but unfortunately not able to control the ball as well as his colleagues Badr and Abdul Aziz Al Qahtani have done Ball goes out for a free kick. Abdul Aziz Kahtani, number 18. He's been brilliant. Scores, scored a goal. Set up one as well. Their goalkeeper, Muhammad. He'll want to keep a clean sheet. Very rare in this game. Keeping clean sheets, not conceding a goal. Three minutes left now on the clock. Saudi running time down all the pressure now on Switzerland we're told to take the ball off the Saudi players and try to score a goal very good football here again very good passing between the two good ball control and just the finishing not good enough that was brilliant football there by Faisal number six takes the ball past two defenders but hits the goalkeeper Andrew who's done really well considering the fact that they've only scored three goals Saudi could have easily been five or six up if it was not for the for the keeping skills of Andrew throws the ball out now two minutes left on the clock Saudi trying to do trying to run down the clock waste some time Switzerland on the other hand have all the work to do Radha is back in, tries a chip, but the goalkeeper, number one, Mohammed, there is clutching on his leg. Might be a bit of dehydration. He, they have not changed the goalkeeper in this game. Over three goals up, they could do that. Don't want your goalkeeper injured as this tournament goes on. There are still a lot of games to come today on both field A and field B. You can watch them live on the Sports Eye YouTube channel and their Facebook page as well. We're coming from the La Liga Academies for the World Corporate Champions Cup. Rida now on the left wing. One minute left to play. Three goals to the good Saudi Saab. This game looks very much down and dusted. And that's a consolation goal if there ever was one. Ali Oon, he's been playing really well. full stretch gets his hand but the ball goes into the back of the net 3-1 now Saudi Vitol get a consolation goal 50 seconds left on the clock can this be a comeback Saudi will want to keep the ball now not give possession away they were a bit poor for that goal giving the possession away back heel attempted Saudi giving the ball away with the counter attack Rida very poor in the last half 
trying the spectacular from that angle it's almost impossible to get left footed shot into that goal post very small goal post here for the football games you can look he looks exhausted there raza quick substitution now qatani goes out badr comes in just for the last 6 seconds of the game we're counting down the clock the next time the ball goes out of play the referee will blow his whistle and badr even though the game is done and dusted he's the live wire wants to get his name on the score sheet if he can good ball control but there are defenders on the way hatam now from the outside unable to get to that ball and goes out for a free kick and with that that's the end of the game saudi saab 3 switzerland vitol 1 saudi saab have taken the three points they were definitely the better side could have easily been five or six goals up if it wasn't for andrew the goalkeeper but in the end saudi saab have done really well there we have it the end of the game we'll be back after a short break for the next match on field a stay tuned
this could be a kick in. Oh, the defender has gone down there for a bit. And it's going to go against the home side. Gavin O'Keefe to bring it in to Owen Duffy. So the two goals up to the good already. Just five minutes into the game. Absolutely cruising. Looking very strong favorites for the title of the World Corporate Champions Cup. Nice give and go there down the left flank. Low shot. Just beats the keeper, but just gone past the right upright as well. That was very, very close indeed. PwC looking a little ragged at the back. Looking a bit flustered with the pace and accurate passing of the Irish. And when it's their turn to switch it on, they're giving the ball away too early. Ireland dominating the possession, dominating the attack and dominating the pitch, to be quite honest. Niall stepping out once again, using that keeper really well. Really fizzing the ball around on this AstroTurf. This time another opening, but a good interception there by number four for UAE, Hussein. And that through ball just about cut away in time by Niall. Brilliant defending. Gavin O'Keefe on the ball. But Hamza giving chase alongside him. Does well there. Gets the kick in for his side. Mustafa on the ball right now. Working it to Hamza on the right flank. Looking for options. But closed down quickly there. This time a speculative shot, but nicely done by the Irish. Breaking down the right flank is Niall into Gavin O'Keefe at the center circle. Stephen is in the starting lineup today as well. He's moved all around the pitch and Owen Duffy, a very noticeable figure. Hard to miss him. Stephen trying a give and go there with Sieran. A bit of poor control. Nicely turned there once again. Bill O'Brien, the keeper. Now we have Mustafa on the ball once again. Plays it down the right flank. A shot at goal, but it's gone way sailing over the top. That was a chance. That was a good opening created there by PwC. Had to work hard to create an opportunity. And it's been blazed over the bar. Sieran on the ball right now, right at the center circle. Just passing it around with Stephen. And the way they utilize the keeper as a libero, that's one thing that all of the sides really need to stand up and take notice of. Halfway into the first half, it's been all Ireland so far, all synergy. Nicely moving the ball around, making the home side chase them, tiring them out. It is that time of the day when the temperature tends to soar up. The sun is at its zenith so it's tough work out there and they're just playing keep away possession football right now that's just the way to go when you have a comfortable lead work around the defenders get pull them out of position and when you get an opportunity to strike take it and do it efficiently trying to find some spaces down the middle. Very comfortable in possession. Sierra and this time tracking back. An extra man added to the Irish back line. Give and go with Owen Duffy. Breaking down the right flank. Tries a low cross, but nicely cut away. Mustafa this time on the ball. Trying to break. Tries to palm it. Beautiful save there by Owen Duffy. Fingertip stuff over the bar. Brilliant sequence there. A low angle shot and he had to react quickly there. Absolutely stunning save. The save of the tournament so far for me. Corner here for the home side. Plays it quickly but Niall steps in. Nicely done. Very nicely done. Hossein cleans up. Plays it all the way back to Bill O'Brien in the goal. For PwC. Matthew getting on the ball as well. Hamza trying to make something happen, switching flanks, but closed down very quickly by the Irish. Been a fascinating game. Contrasting styles, contrasting fortunes. 
And this time, good pressing from the Irish forwards. Get a kick in. In a dangerous area of the ground. Number 18 out there is Paul. Waiting to get the ball in. Paul Maldini playing in a more defensive role. And Owen Duffy, he's been very, very adventurous. Striding up and down the pitch at will. But perhaps boxing, him, boxing himself in there, taking some chances. And good tackle by Mustafa. Wins the ball back in a dangerous area. Trying to get a cross in. Home Aldini snapping away at his heels. And he's got the ball. He's breaking through the center. In some space, but Bill O'Brien covers well. And the ball will harmlessly go away. For a and when he gets going, he's like a freight train. Very hard to stop. And in fact, the referee has pulled it back for an earlier free kick so the Irish get to rebuild and reset. Home Aldini on the ball on the right flank, just passing it around very comfortably. Brilliant rotation of the players. They're constantly moving as soon as they get the ball going towards the next player. Find new positions, new angles. Working them around very nicely. An absolute masterclass in how to play five on five futsal. Quick, sharp passing, one touch passing, movement off the ball. Tiring out the opposition, and this time Home Aldini streaking down the right flank, gets a hard cross in. But the keeper steps in. Number 18, Mustafa, getting a rightly deserved break. He's worked hard. He's been their star performer for pre-WC throughout the tournament. Tried his level best. But it has been a tough go. Hussein out there at the near post. Alongside Matthew. But it's given as a goal kick then. A change in the decision of the linesman. Supporting at the goal. Nice through ball once again. Nicely cut away. Brilliant reading of the game there. And in fact, the referee has pulled it back all the way again. The home side trying to be a bit clever. They're trying to sneak an advantage, and the Irish were well prepared. Nice through ball down the left flank. Shot at goal and just fizzes away past the left upright. Very, very close. Good attacking sequence there. Well, once again, the home side just slightly off target. Working the ball down the left flank this time. Number nine for the PWC giving chase. Home Aldini on the ball then. Taking his sweet time. Gavin O'Keefe waiting on the touchline, trying to get in. Whenever he's on the pitch, he makes something happen. Good opening down the left side for Paul. Owen Duffy, the keeper, the sweeper keeper. Always active, always looking to pick a pass, always looking to make a run. Lovely through ball to the right flank. It's opening up here for the Irish once again. But they're content just to get everybody on the ball, get everybody a touch, a feel of the game. Sankey out there is number six. That midfield playmaker. This time on the left flank, always in perpetual motion. And the possession numbers have been dominated by the Irish here. Brilliant stuff. This time Sankey down the right flank. One on one, but good defending by Matthew there. Gets the kick in, and they take it quickly. And they're on the attack this time, PWC. Close down very quickly. Matthew creating some space down the left flank, trying to get a pass away to somebody. Good battle there with Sankey, and they've just about nicked it away. And now he's asking for a substitution. Gavin O'Keefe coming back into the game. A minute to go in the first half then. Matthew on the ball. This time breaking is Gavin O'Keefe down the right flank. Has a shot on goal. 
but it's been worked away by the keeper. That was very, very close indeed. Gone for a goal kick. Once again, the Irish breaking down that right flank at breakneck speed. Matthew this time on the right flank. PwC trying to create a goal, trying to create a shot on target. Brilliant futsal going on here at the La Liga Academy in Dubai Sports City. Trying a give and go there were Matthew and Amr. Another kick in. Just a few seconds to go in the first half. Synergy recruitment looking very comfortable. Low cross into the box, but nicely cut away by Niall. Lovely dribbling, lovely feet. Down the left flank, home Aldini takes possession, flicks it on Niall, rounds the keeper. Desperate tackle there by Amr. Home Aldini with a shot, and it fizzes past the goal. Very, very close to getting the third there, the Irish. And that will be half time. 2-0 the lead for the Irish. Looking comfortable, looking commanding, looking dominant. We'll be right back after a short break for second half action between PwC and Synergy Recruitment.
Rabesh? Rabesh? Right then, welcome back everyone for the second half of this encounter between PwC UAE and Synergy Ireland. 2-0 to the good are the Irish as PwC kick off. 15 minutes to go in this encounter. Can the home side get into the thick of it? Can they get some goals through their name? Ireland have looked very good in possession. Have controlled large swaths of the game. This time breaking down the left is Sankey. Into the box, squares it. But cleared away at the last moment. Hamza on the ball. Nicely struck. Just past that upright. Very, very close. That was the opening that they needed. It was Mustafa and Hamza working together there. Just past that right upright. And in fact, Owen Duffy, the keeper, got a touch on it. It's gone for a corner. Low cross into the box once again. Mustafa and Hamza working together. Back heel, lovely goal there for PwC. A brilliant finish. It back into the game are PwC. Fantastic finish there. A moment of inspiration has brought them back into the game. Needed that early goal in the half. And now the Irish will need to get switched on immediately. Join Duffy once, for once has been caught out. Thanks to a moment of magic. One of the top goals of the tournament there. Gavin O'Keefe on the ball. Posting up. Plays it back to his back line. It's been a steady tactic. There's a two-man back line working the ball around with the goalkeeper, Owen Duffy. But now they have the wind in their sails to the home side. Can they capitalize? Can they keep producing moments of magic? Only the single goal, the difference between the sides. The Irish have had a very good tournament so far. Two wins out of two. PwC have had their struggles. They've lost close games. But this time, third time could be the charm. Once again, that patient build-up by the Irish. Knocking the ball around in their own half. Tempting the UA to press. Tempting to pull them out of position. This time, Gavin O'Keefe squares it, but nicely cut away once again. There's a UA player who's taken a knock to his left right ankle. Might need to get it looked at. Just Gavin trying to square the ball, caught his foot instead. But of course, no harm done, no foul intended. But the UAE will get on the ball with that man Mustafa, who produced that brilliant goal, brilliant assist to Hamza. Good to see him on the ball. Need him to control the flow of the game. Nicely squared towards the left flank. Trying to out-dribble home Aldini there. But he does really well. Hamza, the number 10 for PwC, has two very sparkling feet. Good to see him trying to stretch the pitch. Finding new areas where he can be dangerous. Sankey number six for Ireland. Home Aldini number 11. The big tall winger. Nicely squared. Good stop by the keeper. And he's missed it. Can you believe it? From point blank distance. The entire goal at his mercy. And he's fired it wide. The UAE get away with one there. That should have been 3-1 for the Irish. But could that be the turning point of the game? Mustafa trying the through ball there for Amr, but just couldn't get a latch on to it. And the Irish are back onto the ball. Niall out there. The conductor always likes to play deep. Nicely cut out there by Mustafa. But it will be a goal kick. Just ten and a half minutes to go in the half. Very slim lead here for the Irish. But they have looked... A bit ragged here in the second half, it has to be said. We've not been entirely switched on. Not playing with the same intensity we saw in the morning game. 
And could the home side pounce on that excellent bruising tackle there? Hamza on the ball, plays across to the left flank. Mustafa has his shot deflected away. Frustration for the UAE dugout. They can sense an opportunity here. They can sense that their moment is coming. Meanwhile, Gavin O'Keefe is down. Feeling a bit of discomfort in his left foot, but he seems to be fine. Pat on the back there from his opposite number. Mustafa looking to fire in this corner here for PWC. Nicely cut away. Gavin O'Keefe there. Has some space to move. Squares the ball to Niall. And he's Meg the keeper there. And the third goal for the Irish. Nicely put away. Legs. And that two goal cushion has been restored. 3 1 synergy. Under 10 minutes to play there. PWC once again on the back foot. They pushed their luck on that corner, sent men forward and got hit immediately on the break. Ireland have been absolutely precise with their counter-attacking. And putting that opportunity away. Oin Duffy on the ball then. Once again passing it around in their own half. Ball on the ball, playing it to Oin Duffy. That's been the pattern. Home Aldini sitting in there, using his physical presence, using his speed. Eight and a half minutes remaining in the game. Can PwC nick another goal? Make it close, make it tight. Hamza on the ball there, plays it back to the keeper who's being adventurous here. The flick on has been intercepted by Homo Aldini. The through ball, one on one with the keeper. Brilliant save. Bill O'Brien getting down sharply. Making the save that needed to be made. And Homo Aldini into the side netting. Quickly taken there, that goal kick. Once again, breaking down the right flank. Oh, and Duffy steps in just in time as Hamza was bearing down on it. It's going to be a kick in for PWC. A lung-bursting run there from Hamza. Just about cut away. And with the temperature soaring, there's going to be a drinks break here. In the halfway stage of the second half. Still seven and a half minutes to play. The clock will keep running. And good recognition of the playing conditions by the referee and his linesman. Allowing both sides to get a quick drink in. The pace and tempo of the game is absolutely relentless. 3-1 to the good are the Irish. Seven minutes to go. Can the home side bounce back? Michelle is into the game. Number nine there on the right of the screen. Mahmoud has also come in for PWC. So they're ringing the changes. It's going to be Sankey, number six, with the ball right now. But it is a kick in for the home side. Let's see if they can capitalize. Let's see if they can create yet another moment of magic between Mustafa and Hamza. Low cross, but quickly intercepted there. Brilliant work there by Paul. He's been rock solid at the back. Back heel there, some fancy footwork. Sieran trying to beat his man, but it's going to be a kick in for the home side. Mustafa once again on the ball, but doesn't find his man. That through ball was in a dangerous area. Sieran trying to build up from the back then. Alongside Paul, so they've made a few substitutions here. And you can see the movement there. Sierra and releasing the ball, then breaking in front. Now Sankey on the ball, breaking down the left flank. And once again, they turn back, just keeping the ball, denying possession. You know, they're just about five minutes away from yet another victory. It'll be three in a row for the Irish. They're looking a very, very solid outfit. Certainly contenders for the title. 
Paul Sear and Sankey, Gavin O'Keefe, Niall, Owen Duffy, the keeper, all very, very well versed, reading each other's movements very well. Shot at goal, but this time it's fizzed away past the left upright. He did get a bit of an opening there, but shot it well wide in the end. Hard work out there. This time it's Mahmoud on the ball. Trying to build up from the back, much like the Irish have done throughout this tournament. I'm sure the teams are studying each other, figuring out each other's tactics. And they'll definitely need to take a look at this Irish side. The double pivot at the back, then they have the runners coming back to the center circle. Give and go, very sharp. Mahmoud, good tackle in on him there. This time it's number nine, Stephen into the game. Mahmoud gets an opening here. Tries the through ball, but just couldn't find the space. Mustafa spinning and trying a left foot shot. But safely cut away by the Irish. Four minutes away from victory. Mahmoud has gotten some vital game time, but it's Matthew back into the thick of it. This time nicely blocked. Brilliant defending there by the Irish. And they played back to the keeper. Brilliant one-touch football. That's how you deal with pressure. Siren getting on the ball once again. And look how they've snuffed out the pressure so beautifully, so expertly. Truly a masterclass in 5-on-5 five five futsal. Stephen there trying to play that pivot role in the center of the park. Gavin O'Keefe back into the game. So they don't just rely on their bench. They have plenty of quality throughout their squad. Can make the switch in an absolute blink of an eye and not be affected at all. Under three minutes to go. 3-1 to the good are the Irish. The home side desperately looking for the ball. But this is possession denial at its absolute finest. Working the ball around at speed, at pace. Gavin O'Keefe breaking down the left flank. Beautiful run. Squares the ball, but there's nobody there for the Irish. What a brilliant, amazing run that was. Bill O'Brien clears, but he's out of position this time. And this time, completely misplaced the ball. He was looking for that right wing overlap. Nobody there. He could have gone for a shot at goal. It's an opportunity wasted with the PWC keeper out of position. Very, very lucky there, the home side. Matthew on the ball, looking for his partner at the back. Bill O'Brien, once again, very adventurous. Niall intercepts the ball. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And he's fizzed it wide. There was a center half standing in. But didn't have to step in in the end. Just under two minutes to play. 3-1 to the good, our synergy against the home side, PWC. Nice through ball there down the left flank. This is an opening, but once again tapped away for a corner here. The home side with the final flurry, pushing to get a goal or two. Keep this game close. We've seen funnier things happen in futsal. Nicely worked, trying to create a chance, but once again, the Irish defense very alert, very switched on. They've sent out their A-team, Ho Maldini out there. Give and go once again, but just beyond the striker. It's a kick in, in fact. The referee has told them to take it again. Niall cuts it out. Gavin O'Keefe, lovely footwork, lovely flick on. Ho Maldini with that power and speed. Down the right flank, bursting through. Brilliant save. Here's another opening here, end-to-end -end stuff here now. Step over, one, two step overs. But there's nobody there to receive the ball. Tries to chip it into the box, but Owen Duffy is going to clean it up. And this encounter is almost done and dusted. Gavin O'Keefe down the left flank, moving in to his right, has a shot and fizzes away past the right upright, very close. 
So as the home side have pressed to get the equalizers, they've left gaps at the back. The Irish creating chances for fun now. But this game is surely done and dusted for good. Nice spin there from Hamza trying to battle out there with Niall, but he does exceptionally well. We're into added extra time then. Ball on the ball, just looking up, looking for a, an outlet ball. Brilliant footwork there by Niall once again. Towards Gav. Home Aldini has a shot on target. Nicely saved by Bill O'Brien in the goal. 1-2 here from Mustafa and Hamza. They're going back once again. Errant path though, that will be a corner for the Irish. Not looking at the position of his keeper and that is full time. So it's a comfortable victory for Synergy recruitment from Ireland. PwC with three losses in a row. This game was much closer than the scoreline suggested. But in the end, the Irish run out with the third victory in a row at the WCCC at the La Liga Academy in Dubai Sports City. We'll be right back with the next game in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the World Corporate Champions Cup brought to you by FIFCO. We are here in Dubai at the La Liga Academy and a crucial game between Mali and Saudi Saab. Saudi Saab winning their game today just a few minutes ago. So the heat and humidity is definitely going to put pressure on them. Mali on the other hand conceded 10 goals against Iran. So they would want to do a comeback of sorts. 
exciting game in front of us. Have a look at the Saudi side. They are number nine, Badr. Was the key factor as well as Kahtani. There you have a look, number 18. Solid player, Saudi, very good side. And we have Mali now going from right to left. Saab, Saudi in their white jersey. Mali in their colorful kit. Their brother trying to get the ball off the Mali player. Very similar tactics to the one Saudi employed. They keep the ball at the back for as long as possible. Looking for a break. Number five, Hassan from Saudi. Very good defender. Number Timber Masak. He was instrumental in the goals that were scored by Saudi. Moves in very quickly from the left flank into the box. And there you can see that number six, Faisal, orchestrating from outside like a manager. And what he wants the players to do, but they're retaining possession, keeping hold of the ball so far. First minute of play, not a lot happening. And the goalkeeper, Mohammed pumping the ball upfield. Looking for Hassan, who was running down the right flank. But a good interception there by the defender from Mali. Mali has won their first game, lost their second game very badly. And now have to win this game to stay in the top two of the table. Saudi Saab, on the other hand, have won both their games. Are in a comfortable position. Number nine, Keita, he was very good as well. And you can see that lots of pace, power, a strong shot and good defending there by Hassan. Running all the way back, tracking back and defending that shot. They have a corner now, Faruto, number eight, taking that quick corner. Number nine with the ball now, Keita. Mali playing with two different jerseys. They've got a all yellow kit as well as this green and yellow. Very colorful in their approach as well, along with their uniform. Number 10, Toure takes a shot, hard shot, goes fizzing past the goalpost. Mohammed goes outside to collect the ball. That's a goal kick. Oh, again, he's lost the ball. That's a foul by Kahtani. The referee is running in. He had an open path towards the goalpost. Toure. But pulled back very hard. Free kick. Not going for the direct approach. Open shot there. Not hit very hard. So Mali making an impact on this game. Trying to make a statement against the strong Saudi side. Getting a shot but not on target. That would have been very close. The goalkeeper was wrong footed. But the shot was wide. Again on the attack now Mali this time. Good footwork, again, good defending there by Hassan. He's all over the place, playing on right, on the left of the way pitch. Strong tackle there, Gonture. And the referee has called for a free kick. Quick free kick taken, takes a shot, goes over the goal post. Very aggressive football there by Mali. Saudi, on the other hand, are playing their second game. In quick succession, must be the tired of the two. Ball in open play now. The goalkeeper, their captain, number one, Kuliboli, didn't have a good day. 
against Iran, conceding 10. But so far, so good. First five minutes, and Mali has not conceded a goal. Saudi, on the other hand, will be looking to score one as quickly as possible. Again, strong football, good passing, but again, very good interception and defending there by Hassan at, at the back, number five for Saudi Saab. This has been a very cagey start so far. Badr on the left. Very good dribbling skills there. Very good dribbling skills. Still has the ball but has given it away. Good defending in the end. And they pump the ball up the field for a quick free kick. <coughs> Hassan taking a quick shot, saved well. That's a good opportunity there for number nine, Keita. He's testing the goalkeeper, Mohammed. Makes his first save of the match. Ball goes out for a corner. Quick corner taken. Number 10, Toure trying to get the ball to Dembele. And takes a big long shot again fizzes past the goal post well, Toure, Kita and Dembele the three in the middle number six Faisal he's been very good as well made an impact in the game when he was brought in as a substitute well, you can see even the referee is feeling the heat now. It's a tough, thankless job being a referee and the linesman. They don't get a rolling substitution, unfortunately. Have to be in the field of play for the full 30 minutes. Number five, Hassan now from the right. And again, similar approach to Saudi Saab. The goalkeeper keeping the ball on his feet. Pumps it up front. Kuliboli coming out of his line, trying to punch that ball away and missing it completely. There seems to be a small hold up as we get the ball back and play this time for the goalkeeper. Building slowly now, number seven, Al Jalufi is in, this, in the pitch as well. Faisal has come in replacing Badr. Mali, on the other hand, still have their 10, 9, 8, and 4 inside. Dembele, Keita, Toure, and Foroto. Opening here for number seven, Al Jalufi. Cuts the ball in, but no one there. Defense get a hold of the ball now. Well, we have the halftime break. Apologies, there must be some technical problem with the timer that we have. 15 minutes up in the play.
We'll be back after a short break. I think because of the heat, the game has been split into 10 minutes now. 10 minute breaks, the referee right at the back, you can see, feeling the heat. It's extremely hot and humid outside for football or any sport for that matter. So even though this is a corporate championship, the players extremely, supremely fit. Mali now on the attack. Continuing from right to left. So yes, that was just a mid-break. Not a half-time break. Otherwise, they would have definitely switched sides. Number 11 now walks in Sultan for Saudi. We'll see a lot of this happening today as the games progress. A lot of quick substitutions, as you mentioned, is hot and humid. The goalkeeper Mohammed now playing like a midfielder, trying to take that ball up. Quick passes again, pumps the ball upfield. Number six, Faisal, unable to get a hold of that. That was hit a bit too hard, but a good idea, just the wrong execution. Goalkeeper Kuliboli. And again, number 10, number 9, number 8 for Mali and number 4, Dembele, have been on the pitch the entire time. Supremely fit, all of them. Toure, Kita, Dembele, and Foroto. They try to keep the ball in. And Saudi now has possession. 18 minutes left. Still the score, nil nil. Very close game. This very cagey start from both sides. Number eight takes a shot. Ammar in the field of play. That was a very good opportunity there for the Saudi side. Hits the goalkeeper's hand and goes out. Some goalkeepers in this futsal tournament wear gloves, some don't. Now corner kick. Faisal taking it from the left foot, pumps it in. Again, very good save there by the goalkeeper. That was another solid opportunity there for Amar, number eight. He scored a goal in the last game for Saudi. Very much a poacher or a striker for this Saudi side. Another corner kick. These corner kicks are coming very quickly for Saudi side. Mali now on the counter attack, but extremely good defending there from the Saudi. Number four, number five, I beg your pardon, Hassan. I think he's hit himself on the head. That's the number 11, Sultan. He was tracking back really quickly. Saved the ball. Might have got a, an elbow on the head. Innocuous in, injury. Putting some cold water on his head. Quick free kick taken by Mali. Going back to the goalkeeper now. Number nine, again Keita up front. Intimidating striker Keita. Again, pumps the ball of Kita, has the ball at his feet. Very good tackle there by the number eight, Ammar. Now Faisal trying to get a hold of the ball. Again, Mali on the counter-attack. Quick feet, trying to get a shot in. 
number 10 Toure and Saudi recover the ball and pumps it up field and now they have a half time break so after the first 10 minutes there was a, just a quick water break for the players as we said it is really hot outside so they deserve all the breaks they can get but have a look at that conversation and that intensity Badr there explaining to his players what he wants them to do as well we'll be back after a quick short break Well, we're back live after the short break for the second half. Still nil-nil between Mali and Saudi Arabia Saab. We have Dembele, number four. The ball is open. The goalkeeper is on the floor. Almost an opportunity there now. Toure with the ball gives it back to the goalkeeper. The captain... Kuliboli. Intelligent there. Take, planning to take the players off guard. They've asked for a foul, a handball. Number 10, Toure with the ball. Looking to take a quick free kick. The referee points to the spot where he wants the free kick to be taken. Foroto, Keita, Toure all over the ball. Dembele now taking a chip shot directly towards the goalkeeper and a good save there by Mohamed. Then supremely fit this Mali out. Set up. All four players have been on the field since the start. Very good passing there. Number eight for Otto. Outruns the ball. It goes outside for a quick free kick. Yeah. They have the strength of Kane on the bench as well. Strong forward number 11. Still to see in this game. 
he'll be making to look a quick impact as soon as he comes on. Again, very familiar approach there by Saudi, keeping the ball with them, all about the possession. And as we say that, they lose possession there. Foroto getting the ball back and then quickly giving it away. In the end, conceding a foul. Still 0-0, 13 minutes left. Quick shake of hands between Foroto and their number seven from Saudi, Mohammed Al Jalufi. Gets a yellow card for that foul. We've seen a couple of yellow cards so far, but the game has been played in very good spirit. No red cards as such. Some were rash, harsh fouls. But nothing more. Saudi goalkeeper now with the ball. Trying to start something from the back. Thinks about pumping it upfield, but then gives it to number eight, Ammar, who's replaced Hassan in the defense. Jalufi coming in quickly, getting the ball from the goalkeeper and then giving it back to him. Again, good pass, trying to find Faisal. It's a good opportunity there, he can get a shot in. Very good defending there by Jalufi. The goalkeeper was on the floor, but he's blocked the shot of the number 10 midfielder, Toure. Again, taking a shot, testing the goalkeeper. This time he's wearing his gloves. Okay. Trying to take a quick corner. They very quickly realize they have to take it from the left side. Quickly taking number 10, Toure, number 8 for Otto. Keeping the ball. But given as a handball. So free kick for Saudi. 11 minutes left on the clock. Still nil-nil. This is the first game today on field A which has not seen a goal so far. We've had a goal fest on this pitch. 10 goals conceded by Mali and they scored 4 as well. <coughs> Quick counter attack by Saudi. And very strong defending there by the big unit, number eight. He'll be very lucky not to get another yellow. The referee giving them a hard lecture. Explaining to the captain, this is his third foul. Is that enough? Number nine, Keita. Number four, Dembele. Standing away from the ball. Setting up a small wall. Trying to block the shot. Faisal over the ball with his left foot. Tries to go straight towards the goal post. Hits a defender. And Kulibuli collects. I think Mali will have to make a change. Their players have been on the pitch since the last 20 minutes. Must be feeling exhausted. Now, Dembele on the left flank. Brings the ball in, but nobody there in the midfield. And that's very well done by Jalufi. He's taken the ball off the defender. Tight angle there. Puts the ball in, but no one available in the box to take a shot. Mali very lucky not to concede. It's still nil-nil here. In the game between Mali and Saudi Saab for the World Corporate Championship. Strong tackle there by Hassa by Faisal. Beg your pardon. Mali now taking their time. Last eight minutes left. They still have Kane on the bench. We've not seen him so far. Big unit. Very good striker.
Quick pass there by the goalkeeper. Gives it back to Foroto. Dembele asking for a foul and receives it. Yes. Hard tackle from the back on Dembele, number four. Again, free kick taken. Still 0 0. Toure, they're looking for Dembele. He passes the ball back. They lose it again. And again, back to the goalkeeper. So good recovery there by Mali. Not giving Saudi any room in that midfield area. Quick pass again. Ball back to number 10, Toure. The goalkeeper Mohammed now saves Saudi now on the counter number six. Faisal and they have finally scored Saudi against the run of play you would say Ammar number eight puts the ball in the back of the net. Mali a bit exhausted they've brought in number six Dulure in the middle but unfortunately for them Saudi has now scored and with just seven minutes on the clock Mali again on the back foot they have conceded a goal once again they have a habit of conceding an early goal this time they dragged it all the way to the 14th minute of the 24th minute of the game and now with six minutes left to play Saudi will try to keep possession this is what they do best keep the ball right at the back between the goalkeeper and the two midfielders. Hassan has been brought in now at left back. Strong midfielder, that's a mistake and Badr very well done by Badr tracking back but we've got Mali still has the ball. Could this be the opening? No, he has missed number 11 Kane on the pitch. The big striker gets a golden opportunity to equalize for Mali and has missed the back of the net very unfortunate that could have easily been 1-1 the goalkeeper making a mistake at that time Mohammed giving the ball away to Keita and again another error almost unforced errors here by Saudi could be very costly Kane now one on one with the goalkeeper can he score three defenders in the back Badr stopping the ball from going into the back of the net the goalkeeper Mohammed was on the floor but they had two defenders manning the net brilliant stuff this brilliant defensive play by Saudi Hassan now again loses the ball Saudi have lost the ball three times but they have not been made to pay by Mali three chances three opportunities missed but they're going to Kane Got a big knock. He's a big unit there. Takes a lot to bring somebody like Kane down. Small protest from him in front of the referee. And a Saudi player has received a yellow card for that foul. Direct kick now. We go back. Dembele now on the pitch as well. Toure on the pitch, Kane, the forward, missed two golden opportunities. The goalkeeper comes out playing like a short wing back. Badr shoots from far and misses an empty goal post. Very And Badr has missed an open goal post. Saudi had an opportunity to get a two goal cushion. The goalkeeper now throwing the ball out and asking to be substituted. He did have a bit of an issue with his foot. Just getting some running repairs done. The Saudi goalkeeper, the second goalkeeper that had come in, Gahrawi, had conceded four goals in the second half. Muhammad had conceded none, had kept a clean sheet in the first half. So maybe that's why they want to keep him on the pitch instead of doing a substitution last three minutes now. And there, as you can see, 
Strong goalkeeping there, putting his body on the line to save that ball. Three minutes left. What can Mali do here? They've got all their big units, their big strikers now on the pitch. Kante, Keita, Toure, Dembele, all on the field at the moment. So going for power. On the other hand, you've got the nimble feet of Badr. Again, very good passing, good play. Could this be the goal, the winning goal? Yes, it is. Unbelievable football, one-touch football between Pamasak and Badr. Number 9, number 10 combining for a fan. Match. Saab now with a two-goal lead. And two minutes left on the clock. Beautiful futsal there, if there was any. Now again on the attack. Mali have had their opportunities. Kane missing two open shots. They've got two minutes now to stage a comeback of sorts. You have to say Saudi supremely fit. And now very much one of the favourites of this tournament. They're playing their second game in a break of just 20 minutes. Pada running in. It's a live wire. Looks a lot like Neymar. And plays a lot like Neymar as well. And there you have it. Number 18, Mohammed Al Qahtani. Very, very strong midfielder there. The playmaker. Takes a quick free kick. Bamasak, number 10, takes a shot, misses. The goalkeeper is there to save that ball from going into the back of the net. That was a hard shot there by Bamasak. A very good tackle there. Very good tackle by the number 19 of Saudi Gahrawi, who's on the field now. And again, Mali failed to capitalize. That is the end of the game. Saudi Saab 2, Mali 0. They've taken a big win. Two wins today for Saudi Saab. And now with six points, very comfortable. They won their game yesterday as well. Unbeaten in this group. And making their way into the quarterfinals. Saudi Saab 2, Mali 0. We will be back after a short break as the action continues in the World Corporate Champions Cup 2021 being held here in Dubai.
corner for Monaco here then. 26 minutes have gone by, 27 rather. We've had plenty of corner kicks already. Off the defender, will it be given? No, it's a goal kick instead. SP will clear it out for the Galacticos of Nigeria. So it's been end-to-end -end stuff. Fast-paced, high-octane action. Nigeria with a big result, with a victory in their previous game. Getting back to winning ways. And Monaco have looked very, very... Daniel Gonçalves is the star creative force. Just working the ball around nicely. That was number five, Cedric Moraleda on the ball, down the right flank, as you can see, bottom right of your screen. So they're rotating their squad quite nicely here. JC Brancato in the action, off the post. A guilt-edged chance there wasted by Nigeria. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper. He just had to place it, but it the hit the outside half of the left upright. That should have been 1-0. Chances are at a premium when you have two high quality teams taking on each other. Nicely guided through the left flank. Speculative shot there from number 11. Once again, Nigeria looking to rebuild. SP on the ball. Plays it to number nine, Victor. And that was a through ball. Looking for the dangerous number 10. Daniel being elbowed in the face. Still gets away from his defender. Slaloms past another one. But finally the ball is nicked away. Nice give and go there by the Nigerians. They have a good position here. Working it to the middle. Nice reverse pass, low cross, but the keeper does really, really well. Excellent reading of the game and pounces on it. Five minutes gone, it's been end-to-end -end stuff as Daniel on the ball once again. Blocked off there and the referee agrees with him. He has started the game on absolute fire, Daniel Gonzalez. Low shot attempted, but the sting was taken out of it by the defender there. Number 18, Aaron. Once again, a long distance shot gone well wide. So both sides fancy themselves from distance. It's not easy to beat the keeper from that far out. But we've seen a few screamers go in in the Champions Cup already. Daniel Gonçalves is now in that sweeper role, trying to get an early influence on the game. Cut inside, but there's nobody there to receive the ball. Nice turn there by Sparato. But the Nigerian defenders are very, very stout. They don't let you get the ball away from them. They have good tenacity, good stamina. SP, the keeper, being a bit too adventurous there. Pulled back. Now they do get the chance. There you can see interesting tactics. Three at the back. Instead of two, like the Irish do it. Every team has their own spin, their own tactical patterns. It's fascinating to see. You had teams from absolutely all over the globe, be it Monaco, Nigeria, Mali, Bangladesh, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, to name a few. It's truly a global game. Nicely worked once again. Chance for a shot at goal. And he's put it wide. Can you believe it? One-on-one -on -one with the keeper, lovely passing patterns there from Monaco. Right in front of goal, in the box, and he's put it wide. What a chance wasted. Halfway into the first half, and Fonction Publique will feel like they have wasted way too many opportunities. Nigeria, not looking rock solid at the back, being worked around, and in the end, very, very lucky that it's still nil-nil. Steal the ball in the Nigerian half. Daniel has a shot, saved by SP. Tipped over for a corner. Went for power rather than precision. 
Quickly taken corner here. Work to Daniel once again, shaping up for a shot. Maneuvering, pokes it in, beautiful goal. 1-0 Monaco, what a finish by that man. It's the keeper, a low drive into the bottom corner. And then Monaco take the deserved lead. He really is a superstar of 5-on-5 five five futsal. Ten minutes into the first half then, Fonction Publique. Taking the deserved lead here, looking to build from the back. Lofted ball, interesting tactic there, but Nigeria getting on the move. The Galacticos need to get a result here to be in contention, contention for the next stage. Early ball played and tries a speculative shot off his left foot. Does Kaka, the number four for Nigeria, but he was clearly out of position. So synergy recruitment of Ireland and Fonction Publique of Monaco. The early trendsetters in the tournament, Dali and Gonzalez, skipping past two, three men. What a goal! That is the goal of the tournament. Daniel Gonzalez is on absolute fire. The level. They have been rocked, and they have been shocked by the sheer power, pace, and precision of number 18 from Monaco. Incredible goal that. The highlight of the tournament. Moving at breakneck speed and leaving the Nigerian defense in tatters. Five minutes away from halftime, this game has absolutely flown by as the Nigerians looking to make a rolling sub. It's Aziz, the number 19, getting a break. Coming off screen and off the pitch. Played to the corner flag. Squared, but there's nobody there once again. Monaco working hard. That's number five, Cedric Moraleda. Sticking a shoulder in there. But the referee felt he'd pushed it, pushed his luck. Daniel once again stealing the ball, has an opportunity. Off the crossbar, off the post. How have they missed? Should be 3 0 Monaco. Daniel Gonzalez is a man on a mission this afternoon. Incredible play. Incredible player. Less than four minutes remaining in the half. It's a corner for Fonction Publique. It's going to be Hugi Manfredi on it. Oh, that's a foul. He stuck a foot in there, and Daniel goes down in a heap. This is going to be an opportunity. Mikel, the number 10, coming on. He's the main man for Nigeria. He needs to make something happen. Another free kick opportunity from Monaco. Took a heavy tumble there, but he's up on his feet. They need him to be fully fit if they are to contend for the title. He is their main man. Extremely skillful with the ball at his feet. Has raw pace. And that finisher's touch, that is oh so rare. Here we go. Shot at goal, but this time it's been pinged away. Now the Nigerians can counter down the left flank. Good speed there from Mikel, asking for a kick in. But Cedric Moraleda has been very, very resolute in defense. He's caught the eye as well. This time intercepted. This is a chance for the Nigerians, but the keeper steps in and heaves it away for a kick in. Good reading of the game. Alert. Two minutes remaining in the half. 2-0 to the good, Ironico. The Galacticos have been shocked by the superstar that is Daniel Gonzalez. He has been absolutely incredible. Kick in. For the Frenchman, it's their number three, Lucas Magnani, coming in to create a natural left footer.
trying to ping that ball across to the right flank to Moraleda, who'd made a sneaky run, but just about cut away in time. Of course, it is the early afternoon, so the temperature has been soaring here at the Dubai Sports City. It's going to be tough going for both the sides. Non-stop, breathless action. Moraleda and Manfredi working together. Nice give and go. Brilliant dribbling there from Moraleda. Cross in. Trying a shot. Off the keeper, SP does well there. Good save. Close down the angle. And a lofted curler going over the keeper. Taking chances at the back there. It was Arnold Sparato with the shot there. But SP made his presence felt. Made himself big in the goal. So, Pension Public looking very comfortable in the lead. Magnani plays it back to his keeper. Nicely worked, but... Just couldn't find the winger down the left flank. It'll be a kick in for Nigeria. Just about seconds away from half time. Plays it into the gap to Mikel. Number 10 cutting in on his right foot. Battling with Banyani. Takes a shot. Saved. And he will keep hold on to it. That could have been touch and go there. Very, very interesting game going on right now Monaco looking in command but Nigeria are creating some looks and that will be half time with the side from Monaco comfortably sitting at a two goal cushion but the Nigerians are well and truly in this game as well we'll see you right after half time for the second half of this game
Right then, welcome back everyone to the World Corporate Champions Cup 2021. Second half of the game between Fonction Publique of Monaco versus the Galacticos of Nigeria. It's been the Daniel Gonsalves show so far. Trying to go down route one are the Frenchmen. They've looked very relaxed in possession. Daniel Gonsalves has been on absolute fire. Osukote trying to create an opportunity of battling with the defender. A shot on target, but nicely blocked away by the keeper. He had to be alert there. That was a powerful hit. Huge Manfredi with the ball across the field to Arnaud. But this time the attack breaks down. Good pressure there from the Nigerian defense trying to make a run headed on but there's nobody there and Christophe will clean up plays it back to the keeper that's always a safe option interesting not to see Daniel Gonzalez number 18 out there from Monaco Manfredi with a shot on target but nicely saved by SP was trying to curl it into the bottom corner, just couldn't get it right. Osukote has a chance. And it's been hit away for a corner here for Nigeria. In fact, it's hit the side netting. So it's a goal kick. He was asking for that corner, looks a bit puzzled. But the referee says, continue. Yuji Manfredi on the ball now. So interesting to see Fonction Public giving a break to their superstar. Yuji Manfredi. Plenty of stepovers, plenty of speed, plenty of skill. Squares the ball, shot, but goes past the upright there. Nicely worked there by Hugi Manfredi. And his partner, Arnaud Sparato. So they've looked very, very good in attack. They exploit the gaps very well. Attack together as a team, very good in counter-attacking play. And that has definitely caused problems for the Nigerians, who themselves favor the counter-attack, led by the number, number 10, Kola. But he hasn't found the space to attack down the middle or the flanks. Kick in here for the Nigerians. Lofted in the air, but it's going well wide of the keeper here. have looked frustrated haven't been able to get a lot of shots on target the Frenchmen have been in complete command of the game nice Cristiano chop there from Arnaud not quite pulling it off but so far it's been synergy recruitment from Ireland and Fonction Publique of Monaco who have looked the class of the division so far two victories each to their name Three for the Irish, pardon me. And Fonction Public looking very comfortable at this stage. Brancado on the ball, plays it across to Arnaud. Who just couldn't keep it in. Quick kick in taken there to Kola. Trips on the ball. And you have to be very careful on this AstroTurf when you're trying to turn quickly. Sometimes you can just trod on the ball and that kick in has to be retaken Nigeria trying to build down the left flank nice through ball but Kola couldn't make the run as the ball had trickled away and possession will turn over once again 11 minutes to go two goal cushion here for Fonction Public if the Galacticos can pull one back here it could make the game very interesting but they are firing blanks so far to stop Dumoulin on the pitch alongside the likes of Arnaud and Manfredi. Kick in quickly taken as the Nigerians look to rebuild. Big through ball down the right flank straight to Kola. Back heel, there's a chance for the Nigerians. But it's been missed by Kaka. Once again the rare openings that they do find they're not taking those chances 
Kola with a shot across the goal. Frustration for the Nigerians. Once again, a good opportunity goes wide. Perhaps as a corner. No, it's, a di it's going to be a direct free kick. Also, Kote Kola standing over it. Two-man wall in there. It's Lucas Magnani and JC. Shot is deflected away for a corner. Good fizzing hit there from number 19, Aziz. So slowly but surely, the Galacticos are building up ahead of steam. Played into Kola, trying to square the ball, turn it in, and this is a chance for a counter-attack. Monaco are breaking quickly, shot, but it goes past the left upright. Perhaps should have squared the ball to his teammate Manfredi, who was waiting for the ball. But in the end, that ball has been screwed away past the left upright. Less than 10 minutes to go, 2-0 to the good, our Ponction Publique. In fact, it's a corner there, so a deflection. Squared in, but the Nigerians were alert to it. Huge Manfredi trying to catch them off guard. Brilliant move there by Kola. He's breaking down the middle. Misses the ball to his teammate. That would have been an opportunity. Nine minutes to go. Nice through ball down the left flank. Here's Sparato. Cuts in onto his right foot. Not quite. He's a pure left hand, left legger, in fact. Yuji Manfredi squares the ball. Brilliant hit, but saved at the near post there by SP. That was Lucas Magnani finding himself in a rare position up the field. Had a go at it, and they'll get the corner. Eight minutes to go in the game. Daniel Gonzalez has not reappeared in the second half. And somehow... Monaco have less, lost control of the game so far. Kola on the ball, trying to turn in on his right, posting up. Excellent steal there by the Monaco defenders. Two on one opportunity here. Squares the ball behind him though. Brancato was not in position for that square ball from Hugi Manfredi. That should have been 3 0. The Nigerians powering forward, pouring forward, and leaving gaps at the back. Seven and a half minutes remaining in the game. Given away. That man, Daniel Gonzalez, into the game. Brilliant tackle. Last ditch effort. SP reads that through ball very, very well. That would have been a certain goal. And the Monaco team think tank, seeing they're losing a grip on the game, have brought their star man in to provide some composure to proceedings. Seven minutes left in the game. Fonction Public, two goals to the good, both from Daniel Gonzalez. And there it is, the man immediately on the ball. A kick at him. And given as a foul, rightly so, a bit of frustration shown there by the Galacticos of Nigeria. It's going to be Dumoulin with the ball out. Cedric on the ball right now, behind Daniel, so he will lose possession. A tough tackle there, my goodness. Monaco really getting stuck in. Trying to play for time here, then six minutes to go in the game. Rightly given as a free kick for the Nigerians. And they're going to make a quick substitution as well. It's going to be Aero, number 11, coming into the game. SP, the keeper, being a tad adventurous. And you can see why. That through ball to the left flank, not quite finding a compatriot. Is there going to be a final flurry here from the Nigerians? Or will Team Monaco make them pay on the counter? Gonsalves plays it back to the keeper. Lofted ball. Intercepted nicely there. Cola on the ball. Squares it to the middle, to the right flank. Aero with the shot, but scuffs it. And a neat save there from the Monaco keeper. 
Oh, lovely turn there. Believes his man for dead, but lost his footing at the crucial moment. It's Ogukonche, number seven on the ball this time. So the Nigerian bench ringing the changes. Trying to put on as many attackers as possible. Keep this game tight. They just need one goal to have that belief. This has broken down. And he slipped right outside the box. He's writhing in pain. And the referee says, hang on. I think he's taking a kick to the ear. Down there. Getting some treatment. It's five on five futsal. You th you'd think it'd be played in a more relaxed manner, but you won't see it with the drive and speed and commitment of all the teams on show here at the World Corporate Champions Cup. Getting some water poured onto that wound. Good to see the physio from the Monaco team as well helping out the opposition. And looks like he's all right. Good to see. Brilliant sportsman spirit. They might be semi-pro athletes, but the hunger and the vigor on show would match any of the top flight footballers you see out there in the world. Brilliant stuff. Oh, taking a shot on goal there, even though he was expected to return it to Monaco. Sneaky stuff there from Ogukonche. Daniel Gonsalves, he's been the man of the match by some distance. Squares the ball and puts it away. 3-0 Monaco. It's Lucas Magnani. Game set and match for the Frenchman. Four minutes to go. The back line was exposed. And easy as you like, tucked away by Lucas Magnani. He's had a wonderful game as well and deservedly gets on the score sheet. 3-0 to the good Fonction Public, then they'll match the wins tally of Synergy Recruitment of Ireland. The two hot favorites for the title, SP, with a long ball down the ground, tried to flick it on, did arrow, but nobody was ready for it. Three and a half minutes remaining in the game. Trying to maintain possession here. Moraleda, cross ball across there. Daniel Gonzalez receives it on the left flank, squares it. And 4 0. Huge man, Freire. What a quick strike from Monaco. Who tucks it away. And now the Nigerians have given up the ghost. 4 0 to the good of Monaco. Three minutes to go. This game is done and dusted. Osukote Kola breaking down the left. Squares it, but once again, the Monaco goalkeeper alert. Two and a half minutes remaining in the game. It's Sparato crosses the ball, but SP will punch it away. OJ on the ball. Kola picks it up at the halfway circle. Towards the right flank. But it's been cut out. Daniel Gonzalez for once has been caught in possession. But it's going to be a romp in the park for the Frenchman. 4-0. Their defense looking rock solid. The attack looking in fine fettle with Hugi Manfredi. Sparato and number 18, their superstar, Daniel Gonsalves, once again on the ball, just skipping past the Nigerian defense. Back hill was attempted to Moraleda, but nicely read by the Nigerian defenders there. So it'll be one win and two losses for the Galacticos of Nigeria. Corner here. Oh, it's been muffed there. Arrow on the ball. Looking for somebody on the left flank. There it is, number 10, Kola, on the ball. Works it to the right. Nicely cut away. Beautiful defending here. Elegantly done, as you'd expect from the French. Given away, Kola on the ball, squares it. Brilliant save by the Monaco keeper. He's 
striving for that clean sheet. And this time, they will get the ball away. Under a minute to go. And in fact, that is the full-time whistle. A comfortable victory here for Fonction Publique of Monaco. 4-0, thanks to two goals from Daniel Gonçalves, Magnani, and Hugi Manfredi right at the end. Comfortably strolling into the knockout stage with three wins out of three. The action is all set to continue after a short break, so stay tuned. We'll see you then.
Well, welcome back to the World Corporate Championship Cup 2021 here in Dubai. We are at the La Liga Academy in Sport City. And a crucial game now. Switzerland, Vitol versus Iran, Rafsanjan. Iran making a statement in their first game. Scoring 10 goals today against Mali. Very much on top of the table at the moment. Switzerland, on the other hand, losing their last game. All to play for. They have changed into their away kit. White shirt. They were in the red shirt in the previous match. Maybe a change of color will bring a change of fortunes. Iran as well in their all green. This is a crucial game for both of them. Iran, the defending champions from 2019. Number four, Mahdi from Switzerland. Number seven, Pierre with the ponytail. Number 18, Aliun. Tall striker for Switzerland. Flip of a coin to choose where they want to start the game. Andrew, the goalkeeper for Switzerland with the green cap. It's the peak of the afternoon. Almost 2 o'clock now. Very hot, very humid outside. And Switzerland will be playing from left to right in the first half. We're almost ready to begin. Pierre, number seven, Pierre on the ball. Switzerland, Vitol versus Iran, Rafsanjan. The FIFCO World Corporate Championship 2021. That's the lineup of both the sides. Very, very strong Iran side. As I mentioned, they scored 10 goals in the first game. Today, they're Switzerland with a break. Very good goalkeeping there from the number one Iran, Mahdi. I beg your pardon, that was Subhan, the number 33, their first choice goalkeeper. He had actually kept a clean sheet against Mali in the first half. Iran now on the attack. Number four, Hussein, giving the ball back to Jaber, number five. 11, Uwes, and number seven, that's a good, that was a very good pass, not a good finish there from number four, Hussein. And again, the captain, number seven, Farhad, the playmaker, Creating the opportunities. Quick counter-attack. Number 18, Aliun from Switzerland. Running down the flank. Taking a shot. Gets a diversion and a corner. So in the first one minute, there's been quick action on both ends. Between the Swiss and Iran sides. Very good tackle there from Hussein. But gives the ball away again to Aliun. He's got Pierre in front, number 10. R Hassan from Switzerland with the ball as well. The goalkeeper, Andrew, almost making a huge mistake. Very good recovery in the end. That would have been a blunder. That would have cost them the first goal, but very good. And absolutely amazing football there from Iran, Rafsanja. One zero now for Iran Rafsanjan in the first two minutes. Switzerland are already on the back foot in the first two minutes. Iran showing why they are such a champion side. They put ten goals against Mali in the first game that they played. And 
now keeping possession it's very important in this game to get that first goal get that momentum jabber at that time the goal scorer number four hussein and jabber partnering really well up front takes a shot so they get a corner kick iran Andrew wearing that green cap, the goalkeeper for Switzerland has not had a good day so far. Made a couple of mistakes in the last game and conceded a few goals. Almost made a mistake this time as well. Now, will Iran take a quick corner or chip the ball in the air? Very good chance that again. Good tactics. Number 11, Oves, unfortunately missing the target. can see Andrew with his bruised knees diving all over the goalkeeper number 33 Subhan for Iran a big mistake almost Pierre on the ball unable to get it in the meantime number five for Iran Jaber the goal scorer has run from his end all the way to the Swiss goalkeeper but unfortunately gives the ball away in the last half Goldmouth to Goldmouth action here between Switzerland and Iran. This last group match game. The captain now for Switzerland with the ball. Number four, Mahdi. Number four, two number four. Both captains fighting it out. Eventually the ball rolls out for a goal kick. Switzerland with all the pressure here. They have to score a quick goal to get an opportunity to get some points on the board. Again, very good ball play there by number 11, Osama of Switzerland. Quick free kick taken. Ahmadi again. Beg your pardon, Mehdi again with the ball. Le number 11 is a chance. The goalkeeper saves. Hossein with the shot. Uves taking the ball and feeding it into the path of Hossein, who misses with a straight shot. That was a very tight angle. Now, free kick for Iran. The number seven, the captain Farhad with the armband. Number eight. A pass right at the back for defense. Iran keeps one man in the defensive half at all times. Very good passing there. Number seven again pumps the ball in. But Uves was very close to the goalkeeper. Did not have an opportunity to track back in time to get a shot on goal. However, they do get a corner. So Iran putting all the pressure here on the Swiss side. Again, quick free kick taken. But the shot is high and wide. Very good opportunity again. Iran creating all the chances here in this game. Andrew now with the defenders. A training play here between the three players but there's a mistake Iran unfortunate not to capitalize here on the error from the defenders we have number line for Switzerland Christoph now in the playing half number eight the defender now tracks in front he's still around the ball goes wide off the goal post a goal kick as a goalkeeper you can roll the ball as well when you get a goal kick the rules for futsal slightly different from the game we are all used to watching the beautiful game this is a fast paced action here in the futsal World Corporate Championship. Subhan runs over the ball, lets it go past the goal line and gets a goal kick. Iran, Rafsanjan, one. 
Switzerland veto all zero. All to play for. And after the first eight minutes, they're taking a quick water break. It is extremely hot outside now. There is a slight breeze which would be helping the players a little bit. But the heat and the humidity is so harsh, not just on the players, but even on the referees who have to cover the entire field of the pitch. Well, we have a lot of changes now. Three new players for Iran. Number three, Mustafa. Number 18, Masood. And number 19, Hassan inside. Number 18, again, new players now on the pitch. So they'll have to take a little bit of time to work together. Uwais, Farhad. And Jabber were playing really well. Good communication between them. Switzerland on the other side have been unchanged so far. They've got Silvio number six inside. 18, Aliun. And number three, Hatam. Now on the pitch. Go back to Andrew, their goalkeeper, who pumps it upfield. Hatam now trying to control the ball. Good ball control, but gives the ball away to the Iranian midfielder, number 19, Hassan. Again, number 8, Abbas, their captain, right at the back, keeping control of the ball. Trying to look for some space, look for the players. Tries the through pass. Again, fresh legs from number 19, Hassan. Abbas running in all the way from his half into the air, into the Swiss goalpost. Good save there by Andrew, and another corner. So all the pressure now from Iran on Switzerland. Is this a chance? This is the opportunity. Very good save. A very good block there by Andrew, saving a certain goal. That was hit very hard. Again, beautiful pass, almost a pinpoint accurate pass there from number eight of Iran, Abbas. Good defending in the end by the Swiss. Now the ball back with Andrew, their goalkeeper. Again, putting a lot of pressure there, number eight. Been brilliant to watch the Iranian back two defenders. And as we say that, they win the ball back and again are on the attack. Number 18 now, Masood playing in the back. Number 8, Abbas moving slightly forward. Again, a very good pass. Hits the goal post there. The passing is absolutely sublime to see from Abbas. Some of his through passes have been just brilliant, beautiful football here by Iran. Their defending has been very strong, but their passing game, especially the through passes across the pitch have been beautiful. Lovely football to watch. Again, as we have a look, they come to attack and Andrew, the goalkeeper is there. Abbas trying to get his name on the score sheet. 11 minutes into the game. We still have 19 minutes to go. Switzerland has a lot to do. If they want to level this game, I've, I don't think Subhan has been tested so far. Not even a single shot on goal. We have a Swiss player down.
there are rolling substitutions allowed. So I think if you're feeling the heat, it's just safe to say you should get off the pitch. Get some fluids in you. Hatam now over the ball, takes a strong shot. And as we mentioned, Subhan is tested finally and makes a brilliant save. Keeping a clean sheet so far for the Iranians. Aliun over the ball, takes a quick chip. A block by the Iranian defenders. Quick running instructions from Aliun as well. Asking for support from number six, Silvio. Ball now with number 10. Again, it's that man, Abbas. He's all over the pitch. Number five, Rida. And number 11 now trying to do something. Osama, again, Abbas has taken the ball back from the forwards of Switzerland. And he's orchestrating something, a start. Now for the Iranians, a quick substitution now with the last one and a half minute of the first half to come. A shot on goal. Good save there by Andrew. Gets the ball back. So we have one and a half minute left in the first half. Abbas deservedly come off, comes off for a quick break. He's been instrumental, not just in the goal, but also making sure that Iran does not concede one. Rock solid at the back. Replaced by number 10, Raza, who's now taking the responsibility of manning the defense. Very good football there again. Good passing. Is that the goal? Iran has scored again. Beautiful goal there by number 19. Winger who kept the ball in the field of play and then passing it to Hassan who was in the open, slots it past Andrew, Iran Rafsanjan 2, Switzerland Vitol 1, nil. and at that we will leave you for the halftime break to catch our breath as well as the players take some fluids we'll be back in a couple of minutes for the second half
Well, welcome back after that short break for the second half of this game between Iran and Switzerland. Sports Eye, the streaming partner for FIFCO Dubai, the World Corporate Champions Cup being held here in Dubai 2021 at the La Liga Academy pitches. It's hot, it's humid. You can have a look at the referee putting some cold water on his head, trying to cool down. In the meantime, Iran turning up the heat. Number seven, Farhad now with the ball. Fresh legs, bit of a breather for the players. Switzerland on the other hand. Ali Yoon, number six, Chris, number six, Silvio, both outside. They were very much a part of the first half. But not able to stop the Iran juggernaut. Again, very good pass there. A good shot, good attempt there by Hussein, number four. Hits the defender and goes out for a corner kick. Iran putting on the pressure already in the first 30 seconds. Corner kick being taken by Raza. Chips the ball in the air, looking for a striker. No one there to head the ball in. But the goal scorer, number 19, Hassan, keeps the ball in. Again, it's that man, number seven, Farhad, steaming in from the middle. Very good football, this very good possession football. Can number 11 now, Oves, takes a shot, another shot. Two beautiful saves there by the goalkeeper, Andrew, of Switzerland. That could easily have been 3-0 for Iran. But he has to block not one, but two shots simultaneously. Brilliant goalkeeping there. Corner kick taken very quickly. Again, the ball rolls out for another corner. So again, Iran putting a lot of pressure on this Swiss VTOL side. This time, short corner taken, trying to bring that ball into the middle. And unfortunately, there were two defenders. Iran starts again now from the back. Number four, Hussein, playing the role of the defender at the back. Oves, number 11, very quick. The ball goes out for a free kick. Quickly taken, but given the ball away again. It's been very poor. The Swiss side, and as we say that, Oves has the ball. It's one-on-one -on -one with the defender. Number seven, number four there. Good shot, and again, a strong block by, off by Andrew Hussein. Had the goal post in front of him. He does that again, and again, a very good save by Andrew Hussein. And Andrew seem to be the only two players playing at this moment. A great opportunity there. Through pass, but Oves unable to capitalize. Andrew has done extremely well to keep this game and that deficit to two goals on only. Iran could have easily been three or four goals up already. But they seem to be the favorites, the champion side. Iran, the defending champions. They put ten goals away in the first game that they played today. Strong shot there by number seven, Farhad. Tearing one of those advertisement banners. That was how hard he hit it. Andrew in the back now trying to start something. The goalkeepers here don't only have the job of stopping the ball from going into the back of the net. But they also play a key role in starting the attack. Again, after the eight-minute mark. Three players being changed by Iran. Taking a quick break here. Ball given away now. New new players on the pitch. Number 18, Masood. Trying to get a hold of that ball. 
but it goes out. Last 10 minutes of this game now. Switzerland, Vito 0, Iran, Rafsanjan 2. Switzerland with all the work now to get back into the game. In the meantime, Jabber trying to start an attack. Number 19, Hassan, the goal scorer, tries something spectacular, something fancy. A back flick, but misses the ball completely. When they come off, you look extremely good. When they don't, it makes you look like an amateur. Number 19, Hassan now on the field. Number 18, Masood as well. So a complete overhaul of the four players that were playing inside. Iran know that there are the knockouts coming up as well after these round games. They very much sealed their slot in the quarterfinals. Pierre, number seven, Pierre, looks a lot like Antoine Griezmann of France with the ponytail and that number seven. Again, very good football, good ball control there. Number 18, Masood looking for Hassan, but finding a defender. Iran, even though they're two goals up, putting a lot of pressure on the Swiss side to win the ball back. Number 11 now, one on one with the goalkeeper. Subhan comes running out, playing like a defender there. He's been knocked on his leg. That was bound to happen. Both of them, both. We have a small hold up now as Subhan is getting a quick look at. Number 10, Ahsan and Subhan colliding there to get to the ball. Taking a small knock. But this time, Iran will not take a gamble of changing their goalkeeper. Seems to be in a lot of pain there, Subhan. I think with the matches coming up and just eight minutes left on the clock, it would be a good idea to make a change and get the reserve goalkeeper in. They're taking a very, very quick short water break. The referees, the players. Aliun, number 18, Aliun, now in the playing side. In the playing five, got Pierre, number seven. I saw number 10 as well, and number six, Silvio. For Switzerland, Vitol. They have to score a goal. They have, and on cue, a very, very aggressive tackle on Pierre. He looks to be in a lot of pain. They're asking for the physio to come in. You can have a look there. Look at that. That was a very strong tackle on the back of his calf. Almost torn that sock. Very lucky not to have a deep gash or a strong injury. He's walking out now. Quick change of players. In the meantime, there is a free kick. Switzerland will want to score now if they have any chance. And the ball is wide. Kicked wide by their captain, Mahdi, number four. Hatam now three in the playing five as well. Very, very aggressive football here by Iran. They've been the team to watch. Very good in attack, solid in defense. Their goalkeeper, Subhan, very limited to his opportunities, but when he has been called upon, has saved some certain goals. And now just playing down the time. Five more minutes to go in this group encounter. 
almost making a mistake there. Aliun now playing as a striker. He's been playing as a midfielder for quite some time. But now he's been pushed up front. It keeps the ball in. Very well done there by the Iranian number five, Jaber. And as we say that, he has been instrumental in that. He was completely wrong for it. So with three goals now, Iran Rafsanjan look like the favorites to take all three points in this game. Hatan, unfortunately, on the score sheet, but for the wrong side. And there, Subhan doing really well, keeping the ball in play. He looks again in a lot of pain there, Subhan. Very good to watch. Silvio, number six. Going to the Iran goalkeeper. He got a very, very strong knock a few minutes ago. And as we speak, he's wincing in a lot of pain. It would be a good idea, in my opinion, to change him at this stage. They still have Mahdi, the goalkeeper, who could come in and give him a break. Trying something now, Iran is trying to switch sides from left to right. And Mahdi again looks for Hatan, get, finds him. Hatan, very good ball control. But a very poor pass. And number eight, that man, Abbas, is now in the field. Great save by Subhan. S safe hands there. Catches the ball. Gives it number 10, Raza. Who finds the goal scorer, number 19, Hassan. Takes a strong shot. But it's called as a foul. Mahdi, the captain, gives the ball back to Andrew. Want to start something again, Aliun. Back to Andrew again. Pumps the ball upfield to Hatan, who tries to flick it into the path of Silvio. Again, very good defending there by the Iranians. A man, Abbas, number five, Rida. Beg your pardon, Jaber. Been really, really, really well. In the middle of the pitch. Ball now back with Andrew. Three minutes on the clock. Solid, solid tackle there by Hassan. And he has finally scored. Number four for Iran, Rafsanjan. Tackling and then scoring the goal for Iran. So with 4-0 on the scorecard, Iran, Rafsanjan looks like having sealed the three points in this game, Switzerland veto all with two minutes left on the clock. Look, down and out in this game. Abbas now with the ball. Brilliant ball control and composure to give the ball back to Subhan, the goalkeeper. Again, that man, Hassan, he's been instrumental. Quick off the flanks and then when he's in the middle, his finishing has been great as well. Two goals scored by him. He set up one. And fantastic to watch. Young talent. Iran as a team has been very clinical in their approach. Iran, Saudi Saab, the two teams that have played well. And unforced error. Aliun now. But overruns the ball. Very good defending and very good Goalkeeping as well by Subhan, putting the pressure, putting his body on the line as well. So one and a half minute left on the clock now. Iran would want to run this down. Subhan, as you can see in the back, looking tired, looking exhausted, in a lot of pain. Number 10 now pumps the ball back in to 18, Masood. 
and they rebuild again. They go back to Subhan, who keeps the ball, looks at his options, and finds number five, Jabbar. You start again. This time, number 11, Awes, young kids. On the field as well. Do remember, these are corporate employees of their companies representing their countries and their companies as well and with that the final whistle goes for the game between iran rafsanjan and switzerland veto iran four switzerland zero iran take the three points and top the group brilliant beautiful football to watch and we'll be back after a short break for the start of the knockouts
And we're back here in the third edition of the World's Corporate Champions Cup. And we have another team. And we have one of our members of the team from Iran. What's your name and what's the company that you guys are representing? The team from Saudi Arabia, right? Can we start again? Yeah, you see Iran. Yes, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Saudi Arabia. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Okay, let's get closer. Hello, we're back here in the third edition of the World's Corporate Champions Cup, and there's a lot of games that already passed. And I have another member from another country. What's your name and what's your country? Raed from Saudi Arabia, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We are presenting Saab as a Saudi British bank. Perfect. Um, how do you feel to be here right now in Dubai, representing your country? أول شيء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طبعا دبي بلدنا الثاني احنا سعيدين بتواجدنا وتمثيل المملكة العربية السعودية وتمثيل ساب في هالبطولة إن شاء الله ربي يوفقنا ونحقق هالبطولة نهديها للوطن ولساب بإذن الله. Actually we are here in a second country which is United Arab Emirates and we feeling that we are in our country Saudi Arabia. Uh, we hope that inshallah we will succeed in this uh, championship and uh, if we win uh, we celebrate inshallah in UAE. That's nice and I have one more question for you. I want to know what are the pronostics? What are you expecting at the end of this tournament? Uh, actually uh, we are expecting to be in the uh, final and uh, Saudi will win her, inshallah for this uh, championship. Shukran. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And guess what? I have Team Canada right now with me representing Watchmojo. He is? Uh, Nadim. Nadim, how do you feel right now playing in Dubai with this weather, but the emotion to be here? The emotion? Well, right now, disappointed that we lost, but uh, we're having a good time and it's, uh, it's been great. It's been great, honestly. So what are the expectations right now that you guys already played? Yeah. Now, what are the expectations at the end of this tournament? Just to have fun now. That's pretty much all we can do. That's great. There you go. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
back and guess what? Team Arlan is here. Yes, from Arlan to the world. We have again Pascal. How are you today? You guys won already. How do you feel right now? Uh, I feel amazing. I feel amazing. I feel like I've just hit a PR on my deadlift or something, but like uh, we're going to have to stick a crown on Gaz Holman because he was king of the wing today. So you guys are about to get another game and then that game is going definitely to the site the final of this event yeah 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 it's going to be a tough one but look they need to call us the postman because we always deliver what was the last score our uh, last score was 4-1 and um, well we, we, we did very well well still sweating out there but but a great performance you know what do you want to tell for all the viewers from Ireland any words Chucky our law <laughs> all right thank you very much stay tuned
And guess what? I have the team Mali all the way from Africa. How are you? What's your name? Uh, my name is Yeyeva. Parfait. Et qu'est-ce que c'est l'entreprise que tu représentes? Ben, je représente le PEMU Mali. Le PEMU Mali, c'est une entreprise qui s'occupe des chevaux. On court les chevaux de la France, okay. euh, de, de l'Afrique du Sud, l'Angleterre. Ok, parfait. Et comment vous sentez, vous ici à Dubaï, et représentant à votre pays Bon, c'est pratiquement, est, on est comme chez nous. C'est le même temps, le même climat, sauf ici, c'est excessif. Il fait très, très, très chaud. Oui, c'est très chaud, mais est-ce que tu te sens et content Oui, je suis content d'être là. Il y a, avec toutes ces nationalités présentes, on ne peut être épanoui ici. Parfait, merci beaucoup. Merci. Et voilà, nous avons ici avec euh, l'équipe de Mali et nous avons ici avec mon ami. Quel est votre nom et votre entreprise que tu représentes euh, C'est Aruna Christian Touré, euh, PEMU Mali, Parfait. le Paris Mutuel Urbain du Mali. Voilà. Parfait. Et quels sont les pronostics pour le tournoi Pour le tournoi Bon, j'ai vu une équipe iranienne qui était très bonne, très tactique et je pense que... C'est mon favori pour le tournoi. Voilà. Parfait. Et comment vous, comment vous sentez, vous ici à Dubaï Bon, c'est une ville merveilleuse en fait. Je n'ai jamais été dans une aussi belle ville. Franchement, euh, j'espère qu'un jour le Mali sera aussi beau. Voilà. Parfait. Voilà. Merci. Merci beaucoup pour merci. tout. Merci.
are here with one of our local teams. And what's your name? Ahmed Mahmoud Al Mahalawi. Perfect. Ahmed, what company are you representing? Representing United Arab Emirates uh, between back to Shalhoub, Shalhoub Group. Amazing. So you guys are locals, but how do you feel to actually qualify for this amazing event? It's actually it's an amazing event and we are uh, really, really too happy to, uh, to participate with this event with a lot of countries, more 16 teams uh, participating with us. So we get also experience to play against different uh, nationalities, different companies. And uh, we actually finalized with uh, position number three in the group. So three matches, three points, three draws. There you go, three, three, three. Yes. That is a lucky charm. Thank, Thank you so much. You are most welcome. Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. And guess what? Another member, another local. We have here Mr. Mustafa Farag. Mustafa, how do you feel to be here right now representing obviously your country and representing your company that you're wearing this beautiful jersey? <laughs> it's such a pride that I'm representing UAE and shall hope for the first time. And it's an amazing event. The organization is perfect. We played such a beautiful games. We wish to be better shape, you know, next time <laughs> you guys come, but all over, it can take 10 out of 10, the organization, everything. Thank you so much. No worries. And I just want to know if, for example, for you guys, because we are 32 degrees right now here in Dubai, for you guys, this is a normal weather. So I guess you guys have that advantage than all the or any other team, isn't it? You know, the sun is always bad. Like we don't usually play on the daily weather. It's really tough that we played in 32 degrees, but yeah, like we used to play, I'm from Egypt originally, but we used to play also here a lot, but still the sun is really tough for us. We haven't played for so long in the summer, but we did what we can do. We did best, we did our best, I mean. You guys did amazing and thank you very much. And thank you for you guys that are watching. <laughs> Stay tuned.
guess what? We are about to see two of the games right now. It's already, uh, the temperature is going down. We have 28 degrees, but we're about to see the first game right now. Actually, the first game after already that we have some games, but some games, sorry. But we're about to see Switzerland playing against the UAE. And we're going to have a classic. We have right now playing England against Ireland. So it's going to be a tough game. They've been playing the last two games. So we're going to see who's going to go to the semifinals. It's going to be very interesting. Stay tuned because we have more information.
Welcome to Field A for the game between UAE Shalhoub and Swiss Vitol. We're here for the World Corporate Champions Cup, powered by FIFCO Dubai 2021. And a bit of a delay, but now we are in for the knockouts. The quarterfinals will be starting today. And then the semi-finals and finals for both the main cup and the plate cup will be tomorrow. We are at the La Liga Academy here in Dubai Sports City. Well, as the players now walk onto the pitch, there was a small break. We were supposed to come back at 3.20, but just a small extension, especially because of the heat. We look at the Swiss VTOL players, their goalkeeper, Andrew, has had a very good game. Number 18, Alioun. Number 4, Mahdi. Number seven looks very familiar with a glimpse of Antoine Griezmann of France with that ponytail and number seven on his back. And the UAE Shaloub group team who've played extremely well in this tournament so far. The coin flip. Anas, the goalkeeper and captain for UAE. And Switzerland now will be playing from left to right in their white jersey, UAE Shaloub. In their red and green. We're ready to kick off the knockout stage, the quarterfinals of the World Corporate Champions Cup powered by FIFCO here in Dubai at the La Liga Academy, Sport City. Ali Yoon, number 18 on the ball. And here we go. Start from the back, number four, Mahdi. The playmaker, inspirational. The Swiss have been very good, but unlucky at times. Ali Yoon especially missing a couple of open chances. Very good tackle there by Pierre. One on one now with the goalkeeper, but his shot goes wide. Does not test the goalkeeper. That was poor. Have to get at least a shot on target. But good intentions here from the Swiss. UAE Shaloub playing from right to left in red. 
the home team so to speak number 11 ahmed on the ball now flick back that's an opportunity one on one against andrew and that's a goal uae shaloub off the mark scoring a beautiful goal there number 10 amin and the swiss team again trailing as early as the second minute lot of pressure now back on the swiss vtol team ball going out of bounds for a free kick those banners taking a battering every time the ball hits them they get torn a little bit more a shot now again not testing the goalkeeper anas there strong shot by pierre going over the goal post switzerland's number 10 ehsan number 4 mehdi the goalkeeper for uae shaloub group anas has been a solid shot stopper and andrew one of my favorite goalkeepers in this tournament with the iconic green cap facing the sun again uae shaloub on the attack number 19 duli tackling that with number 10 ehsan and is that man aliyoun the captain taking the ball back looks a lot like lilian thuram if you're a french supporter playing on left back the swiss team a lot of players that look like the french legends number 7 looks a lot like antoine griezmann in my opinion with the ponytail and again uae shaloup now building from the back number 10 ahsan giving the ball away switzerland with an opportunity an open shot there for mahdi can he get a shot on target no he does not and that's it a goal finally a goal for switzerland the score now 1-1 the equalizer from switzerland it's all happening here in the first 3 minutes again this man aliun tackles the ball gets it away andrew kicks it outside and he get a free kick uae shaloup trying to keep the ball in that would have been very dangerous could have easily twisted an ankle there trying to keep that ball in but a lot happening now all of a sudden in the knockouts these are the games the important ones now a small mistake can be very costly for either team mahdi and andrew tussling with the ball number 18 aliun again he's been instrumental number 7 pierre there's an opportunity and he hits it wide poor finishing there from ehsan number 10 to still be tied with this swiss vtol team they look like a different unit completely again a shot from ehsan again the goalkeeper just gets a hand to it so all happening in the first 5 minutes of this game between uae shaloup group and swiss vtol mahdi coming in from the back now trying to build something here takes a direct shot hits number 11 ahmed of uae shaloup and they try for a counter attack number 3 while plays the ball down to amin again playing it back now and want to compose themselves still 1-1 but it's the swiss sweet all team that's been putting a lot of pressure on the home team the uae shaloup group team number 10 amin again this time the ball goes out of bounds for a free kick number 3 while asking to be substituted it is still hot and humid outside we've seen some of the games with three breaks trying a quick break away again here the swiss team stamban pierre and aliun teaming up very nicely 
in the middle of the pitch. Ahmad plays it now to Hassan who gives the ball away to Mahdi and then takes it back. Brilliant football this. Number 10, Amin wanted to get a shot across but that man Mahdi covering and Swiss on the counter attack now. Can he find Pierre? He goes for the shot, tests the goalkeeper but unfortunately Testing the goalkeeper, Anas. Again on the attack now, the UAE Shaloub group. Strong tackle that by Aliun, but that's a shot. Not on target for UAE Shaloub. The action in this game, very, very close. Number three, Hatan, the big unit. Almost getting a touch. All he needed was to get a little bit of foot on that ball. And it would have been in the back of the net. Again, a lot of pressure there. A lot of pressure by the Swiss VTOL team. Number 7, Hassan of the UAE Shaloub. Trying to keep the ball under control. Does well. Passes it back to his defenders. They're on the attack now. Hassan trying to look for a midfielder. And it's that man, Hatam, who gets a touch. Number 18 now, Aliun. Plays the ball to the left. Mahdi trying to find him. And it's that man, Hassan, tries the shot. He's missed a couple of golden opportunities, Hassan, for the Swiss VTOL team. Take a quick corner. Aliun takes a shot. Finally, test Hassan. Beautiful. Absolutely amazing goalkeeping there by Anas. A short stopper in every sense of the word. He's taken two shots on his body and saved two confirmed chances of a goal being scored in the air. Trying to get a header for Hatam. But UAE Shaloub under a lot of pressure now from the Swiss VTOL team. 22 minutes left in this game. We're halfway into the first half. There's been a lot of goal mouth action now. Hatam, can he get a shot through? A lot of pressure here. Give the ball away easily. This time, Hassan has been a bit off his game. Again, a strong shot there and very well saved by Anas. Number four, Mahdi. Now gets the ball under control. Hassan... Not at the top of his game at the moment for the Swiss VTOL team. Hatam, on the other hand, number three, big unit. Again, very good save there by Anas. Ball was heading towards the goalpost. Hatam now with the ball. Plays it back to Mahdi. Mahdi takes a shot. And ball goes out for a free kick. So again, the Swiss VTOL team putting a lot of pressure on this UAE Shaloub group defense. Number 19, Christoph for Swiss VTOL comes in. Immediately in the action. Number 7, Hassan of the UAE Shaloub group was inter instrumental in their first game, first win. Atan plaguing a cheeky back flick, but there was nobody there on the receiving end. Ball goes back to the goalkeeper, Anas. Now with Hassan again. And gives the ball away, Aliun. Oh, he lost his footing. He would have been one-on-one -on -one in front of the defender. Aliun lost his, def his footing. And the UAE Shaloub group cleared the ball. Now number six, Marcello. And he's one-on-one, -on -one, Hassan with the goalkeeper. Can he score? Yes, he does. Brilliant footwork there by Hassan. UAE Shaloub player, UAE Shaloub two, Switzerland one.
We have a restart now. Switzerland against the run of play. Behind by one goal. Again taking a shot. And number 19, Christoph for Switzerland in the game. Plays it to 18, Aliun, who's trying to find Hattam in the middle. But again, very good defending by UAE Shaloup. That man, Hassan, he scored a goal and now he's got the role of playing the defender. Strong tackle, brilliantly done by Hassan. All-round footballer. And now the ball with Ibra. Not the Ibra. UAE Shaloup on the attack now. Number four, Bilal, overrun. That was a hit a bit too hard. And Bilal not quick enough to get to the ball. There's a quick change now. Number 18, Aliun going off. And the new man immediately on the ball. It's number five, Reza. Andrew playing the ball to Silvio, number six. And now with Reda, number five. Trying to play a quick ball in the air. But Hassan was there to clean it up. Hassan has been one of the best players on the pitch so far, scoring a goal and then tackling like a master central defender as well. Foul given against number five, Reza. And it's that man again, seven. Hassan now taking a free kick. Quick free kick taken. Hard hit. Takes a chunk of the turf and Andrew has made a huge blunder. Very, very lucky. And he's absolutely fluffed that. That was very poor from Andrew. And again, the Swiss are very lucky not to be three down. That could have easily gone into the back of the net. Hassan, brilliant. Absolutely amazing. Nutmegs the defender. Gets a... Hassan, brilliant, absolutely amazing in his finishing. Misses the open goal post, so it's still 2-1. We're in the last minute of the first half. It's been a very quick fire game, this end-to-end -end football. And the UAE Shaloub group now gaining momentum. They could have easily been three goals up already. The same Easily gone into the back of the net. Hassan Brill. And then Ibra misses the opportunity to score the goal. We have a short hold up here. The referee is asking to start the game. Mahdi. Trying a quick run. Again, that man Hassan now. Composed in the middle. Number six, Marcello. Back flick there from Silvio. Then now again, Andrew with the ball. Now again. Of 15 minutes down now. They take a direct shot. It hits Madi and goes out for a corner. And that is the end of an exciting first half. UAE Shaloub Group 2. Switzerland VTOL 1. Both goalkeepers have been tested quite a bit. Andrew almost fluffing and giving an opportunity for UAE Shaloub. And Anas, the captain of UAE Shaloub Group. Saving three confirmed goals. 
Field A, we're here watching the Shaloub Group UAE versus Switzerland VTOL match for the World Corporate Champions Cup. Powered by FIFCO Dubai 2021 here at the La Liga Academy. We'll be back after a quick short break. Welcome back after the short break for this quarterfinal knockout game between UAE Shaloub Group and Swiss Vitol. UAE 2, Swiss 1. Second half begins with the UAE Shaloub Group now left to right and immediately trying to make an impact. Number 3 while getting an opportunity to score but hitting that ball away from the goal post Aliun number 18 on the ball tries to find Mahdi number 4 but over hits it just a little bit it goes out for a short free kick Very good ball control there. Very good ball control by number three, Wael. The ball is still in play. And that was hit very hard. Pierre on the other end now. One on one with the defenders. Just the goalkeeper to beat. But again, the shot not on target. Trying to build something here now. UAE Shaloub Group Weil has made a very good impact since he's been on the pitch. He did not play too much of the first half. Hassan, the man missing from the UAE Shaloub Group setup at the moment, he was instrumental. Scored a goal, set up one as well. Now Aliyun, number 18, on the ball, finds Pierre Header. That would have been a very good goal. Not easy to score headers in this format. Small goal post. Not a lot of room to jump as well. Now starting from the back. Number 11, Ahmed. Trying to find Weil. But instead gives the ball back now to the Swiss VTOL team. Pierre gives the ball to Ehsan. Ehsan takes a shot and again not testing the goalkeeper. Poor execution, the ball going out of bounds. It took a deflection off a defender, so that's a corner. 
And he gives the ball back. They're looking for Aliun. Yes. Pierre has managed to find the... And he gives the ball back. They're looking for Aliun. Yes. Pierre, his right foot does the damage. So now the score moves to 2-2. Two -two. And the Swiss team staging a fight back. UAE Shaloub now starting from left to right. Ball going straight to Andrew. Andrew passing it to Ehsan. Ehsan to Reza. Again trying to find Pierre. Ali Yoon on the right side of the pitch. They've been very strong from the right. The Swiss VTOL team. While now trying to find good goalkeeping there again straight into his hands Amin with the shot and on cue Anas coming out playing as a central defender at that time shot taken blocked by number 8 Ibra is that man Amin now takes the ball back Finds Aliun, Aliun one on one, beautiful footwork there. Take a shot that was very close, very close to that goal post. The Swiss VTOL team have found another gear in the last five minutes. The second half, very aggressive football from the Swiss. I think the UAE team will have to get. Hassan back on the field, number seven. Their playmaker, he has been instrumental in the goals that they have scored so far. Similar to the number seven of the Swiss team, Pierre. Pierre now takes a quick free kick. Number five on the pitch now, Radha. And the ball goes out for another throw. Ali Yoon playing as a central defender. Not moving up too much. 2-2 two, two the score line. 10 minutes left to play. The ball is free now. Is that an opportunity missed? Yes, it is. Number 8, Ibra. The ball is free now. Is that an opportunity missed? Yes, it is. Num and wide. Hassan on the pitch now. Number 7. UAE Shaloub group on the attack. But they have to contend with Pierre at the moment and he gives the ball away. Number 19, Dooley. Good defending. They're calling for handball for Ibra. Nothing happens there. Ball goes back to Andrew. Who starts another attack with Mahdi. Number 4, they find Pierre. Oh, he was outstretched just a little bit. Couldn't get a foot on it. And the ball goes out for a goal kick. Very exciting game this so far. 2-2 two, two the score line. Nine minutes left in this game. Nine minutes left in the second half. This is when the teams are most tired. Tactics play a huge role. Rolling substitutions. Getting the fresh players on to get that winner. Maddy, he's been one of the players to watch for the Swiss number 4 for UAE Shaloub 40 Bilal gives the ball to Hassan who shoots right at Andrew since Hassan has come on that's the first chance of target and on cue Hassan defending as well knocks the wind out of Pierre's sails one on one with the goal brilliant goal keeping that putting your body on the line Andrew grabbing that and I'm sure he has hurt the UAE Shiloub group player. It looks like Ibra, number eight. This is a corporate champions cup. But if you look at the players, the way they're playing, the way they put the body on the line, it looks very much like a professional game, a professional unit. The lot of players who have flown down into Dubai for this tournament. Well, he's on the floor there. It's Ibra, number eight. Ibra and Hassan look very similar. 
has a glass of water. I think he's hit his back. And that's good to see. Andrew, the goalkeeper, just coming in, giving him a high five. Well, with rolling substitutions, be a good option just to go off for a little bit, get some ice on it and come back and see if you can make an impact. Ibra has missed a couple of clear-cut chances for the UAE Shalhoub group. As they ha the players have a quick water break. It's extremely hot outside, extremely humid. But that has not stopped these players from enjoying this game. Ball now with Andrew and the Swiss VTOL team. They start from the back. Number five, Riza, trying to make something here. He's got support, Silvio. He's got Hattam, the big unit. Can he get a shot across? Yes, he can. But there are two defenders blocking the, the route. Can a shot? Saved by the defenders. This time the ball goes out for a free kick. UAE Shalhoub group players now looking a bit tired. Big is exhausted. Rida, number five, with the ball at his feet. Tries to find Silvio and maybe get a header across. Just the ball shoots across the face of the goal. Free kick now for UAE Shalhoub. They start quickly. Going from left to right now. Again, the ball goes out of bounds. It's Marcello for UA Shalhoub, number six. And this that man again, Hassan, number seven. Beautiful footwork there to keep the ball and pass it to one of his players. Number 11, now Ahmed trying to get a shot across. Gives it back. Want to look for Hassan, maybe. He's tested the goalkeeper more than once. Bilal looking for Marcello. And now giving the ball away to Mahdi from the Swiss VTOL team. Trying to build something from here. Hatam, the big unit. Trying to steal the ball away from the defenders. Very good football in the end. And an opportunity for the UAE Shalhoub group. And it's that man, Hassan, number seven, who scored in the end. And an opportunity for the UAE Shalhoub group. And it's that man, Hassan, the ball from the Swiss players and then passing it towards Hassan, who has not missed so far. So UAE Shalhoub group three, Swiss VTOL two. We're into the last five minutes of the game. Snapman number six, Marcello. He was the one who, who provided the assist for the last goal from the right. And now covering the back as a left back, right back, I beg your pardon. Hattam, the big man, the big unit, looks for Mahdi. And the ball now goes out for a corner. Bilal asking to be substituted. Number 19, Dooley, comes in for UAE Shalhoub. Quick free kick taken, Hattam now. Blocking the ball back to Mahdi. Chips the ball in the air, Mahdi. Anas does well. Not cleared it again. Oh, that was close. The goalkeeper was not in any position at all. But Hatan with Hatam with his big left foot. Unfortunate not to test the goalpost. It's still 3-2 for UAE Shalhoub Group. But we've seen the Swiss team fight back more than once. Aliyun now into the field. And the ball goes out for a free kick for UAE Shalhoub. That man, Hassan, number seven. The playmaker, man of the match in my opinion for this game today. He's been defending, he's been setting up goals. He scored two of the three. Ball now pumped upfield. Number six, Marcello, keeping it in play. 
That man, Hassan again, back flick. Can he get a shot across? Yes, he can. Again, that man, Hassan, back flick into the path. Hassan again, back flick. Can he get a shot across? Yes, he can. Again, that man, Hassan, get a two-goal cushion. 4-2 in the favor of UAE Shaloop. Three and a half minutes left to play in this game. And a comfortable position now for UAE Shaloop. Hassan playing a role in all four goals. Can he participate in the fifth? Keeps the ball in. Brilliant work there. Tries to find one of his players on the right. But over hits it just a little bit. And a good decision there by the UAE Shaloop group team. Hassan being substituted by Wael. Number three. There's still a lot of games to come. You want to have your best players fresh and fit. Don't want them injured as we move into the semi-finals and the finals. UAE Shaloop group playing extremely well today. They've been very consistent throughout this tournament. Amin now with the ball. Over hits it. Number 19, Dhuli. Unable to keep it inbounds. And that man, Pierre, now with the ball. Passing the ball now. Trying to find Amin. But only gets Aliun Hattam now with the ball. Can he get a shot across? No, he cannot. There is a defender in the way. The ball goes out of bounds. Pierre now taking a short, quick free kick. Can he find a player? No, he cannot. Just shoots the ball across the goalpost. And the score is still 4-2. Number 19, Dooley, with the ball. Aliyun now with the ball. Swiss Vitor team trying an attack. But they have not tested the goalkeeper, Anas. And talking about Anas, I have Anas' son. Sitting right next to me. What's your name? Malik. Malik, are you proud of what your dad's been doing today? Very much. You want to be a goalkeeper like him? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Very good to see here. UAE Shaloub group, the home team. They're all employees of the companies they're representing. It's good to see them in action here. Short free kick taken very quickly. Back to the goalkeeper, Anas. We were just talking to his son a couple of seconds ago. Almost makes a mistake there, Anas. He's a very confident shot stopper. Saved certain goals. Two that I can remember. Which were two shots taken at the same time simultaneously. Last 30 seconds now. Aliyun. Top corner. Does not get a player. UAE Shaloub on the attack. The ball goes out. Last 20 seconds to play now. And that is the end of the game. UAE Shaloub group 4. Swiss Vitol 2. Brilliant game by Hassan. Number 7 for me. The man of the match for this game. Score 2. Set up 2. Absolutely brilliant to watch. We wish the Swiss VTOL team all the best with UAE Shaloop group now moving forward. Nice camaraderie between all the players here. That man, number seven, absolutely instrumental in this win. Well, we're going off for a short break and we'll see you for the next quarterfinals here at the World Corporate Champions Cup brought to you by FIFCO at the La Liga Academy here in Dubai Sports City.
welcome back to the knockout games the quarter finals for this world corporate championship cup being held here at the la liga academy brought to you by fifco that's uae the home team pwc versus lebanon neutral fuels we're here at field a there are two games going on simultaneously on the other field. It's Bangladesh versus Iran. Very strong game there as well. Have a look at the teams playing this game. Lebanon in purple. Going from left to right. UAE PWC. In the UAE colors, green, black red and white growing going from right to left 30 minutes on the clock here we go lebanon now with the ball and immediately the ball goes out for a short quick free kick for the uae side Matthew, number seven, the ball at his feet. Michel from number nine, takes a quick shot, hits a defender. And Lebanon, under a lot of pressure already in the first minute. Ball hit very hard, very high in the air. And it goes out for a corner. Lebanon already under a lot of pressure. We're just in the first minute of the game. Neutral fuels. Lebanon neutral fuels in purple and white. Will be under a lot of pressure. This is a knockout game. There cannot be any mistakes, any errors on the attack now. The counter starts by the UAE. Number nine. Michel on the ball. They're asking for a corner kick and they get one. The Lebanon players don't look very happy. In fact, it was a free kick given. Number 10, Hamza, the captain, comes in. Quick pass taken. Shot, not on target. Very good defending. And a quick clean up there from the UAE side. Number four, Hussein playing as the defender. Ball through the legs. And the goalkeeper saves it easily. Number one, Nizar. Ball now back with the UAE side. Number nine, Michel. Tries to find a player. Number ten, Hamza. And they lose the ball again. Quick action here. Mouth to mouth. Goal mouth to goal mouth action. In this game. UAE PWC. The goalkeeper of the UAE PWC team now. Finally we have a look at him. Bill number one. Again, starting Michael, number nine, trying to find Matthew, number seven. But the pass not coming through well. On the other hand, Lebanon now on the attack. Very good defending, very, very good defending by UAE PWC. They start a counter-attack quickly. That's number 10. He finds the back of the net. Hamza, their captain, scoring the first goal for the UAE PWC team. Number 10, he <laughs> Back of the net, Hamza, their captain, leading from the front, UAE, PWC 1, Lebanon, neutral fuel 0. And now Lebanon on the counter-attack, boy.
Very good defending there by UAE, putting Lebanon under a lot of pressure. Their goalkeeper, Lebanon's goalkeeper, now playing like a midfielder. Again, a lot of pressure now from the UAE side. Michael coming in from the left. Almost, almost an opportunity there. The goalkeeper makes a sharp save. And that was, believe it or not, the goalkeeper for Lebanon was in the role of the striker and was almost, almost on the goal sheet. Beautiful move. Just a finishing lacking. That would have been an amazing goal. A very, very good equalizer for the Lebanon side. And now number one, Nizar for Lebanon back in the goalpost. Hamza, the captain of the UAE, the goal scorer, the talisman, keeping the ball. He's got a very calm head on his shoulders. That's a good pass. He finds Matthew. Got Michel for support there. And Michel loses the ball, loses the ball. On the attack now, number 10, Abu Ghali for Lebanon. But he's been brought down. Strong, strong tackle. Number three, Maher. And Jad. Maher takes a shot. Hits the defender and goes out. A shot on target. Goalkeeper gets a hand on it. Lebanon now putting a lot of pressure on this UAE PWC team. And number 10. Good opportunity there. Very good goalkeeping. Excellent goalkeeping there by Bill of UAE PWC. That was hit very hard towards him. Just like that, they're on a counter-attack. Matthew from UAPWC losing the ball. A wrong false start there. Now the ball with Nizar. Who plays it towards the number three. Gavin trying to get a hold of the ball. Is knocked off it. That man, Hamza. The captain of UAE PWC scored the goal and now playing as a defender, right back supporting his side. It's been brilliant to watch. Again, Hamza on the ball. Knocked out of the playing field for a corner. A lot of pressure being put by Hamza on the, UA on the Lebanon side. Lebanon neutral fuels. Going to take a quick corner. Number seven, Matthew. And number nine, Michelle in the middle. Back flick, almost. Goal line save from the defender of UAE of Lebanon, neutral fuels. But brilliantly done by Michelle. Number nine, a back heel. Almost goes into the goal post. That would have been a spectacular goal. UAE PWC. One neutral fuels, Lebanon zero still. A lot to play in this game. 22 minutes still to go and Nizar now leaves the goal post. Taking everyone on his own. Finds the midfielder on the left hand side. They're asking for a foul. It was Jad who's lost the ball now and Hamza from the UAE PWC team. The ball at his feet. Passes it to Michel who hits the defender and the ball goes out for a short free kick. They take it very quickly. Number seven. The referee stops them. They started from a bit too far. Trying to be a bit cheeky. Catching Lebanon off guard. Hamza now again. 
does not touch the goalkeeper but hamza seems to be everywhere on the field at the moment very very good pass that and almost finds the goalkeeper long throw there by nazar not on target does not find a player and a clearance from the uae players Again, is that man Hamza with the ball at his feet? It's a false start from the UAE PWC side. They go again. Number seven, Matthew, asking for a foul. The referee waves play on. On the attack now, the Lebanon neutral fuel side. very very well done by that number 10 player UAE PWC now on the defense we're 10 minutes into the game ball hitting the head of Michel and Hamza testing the goalkeeper he was out of his line and the referee has pointed to the spot for a free kick because nizar was outside the box he is protesting wildly saying i was in the box but the referee has now given a free kick to the uae pwc side marginal call that he was probably just a couple of inches outside of that square the goalkeeper is not allowed to handle the ball outside of that and now hamza over the ball the uae captain the goal scorer for the uae pwc side he's got matthew to his left interesting to see what's going to happen is it going to be a fake no it's not direct shot taken hits a wall of lebanon neutral fuel players and the ball goes out for a quick free kick ball rolling back now to the goalkeeper gives it to number 6 for uap wc on the attack now lebanon putting some bodies in front the uae lebanon side nizar now come, comes up takes a shot outside boot very poor finishing there by lebanon there a goal down and at least have to test the uae pwc goalkeeper can good football quick football between the two teams uae conceding a foul looking for a free kick lebanon on the other hand in a bit of a rush the referee stops the game takes a direct shot very poor execution there by number 3 of lebanon the players not happy with that from him and a quick substitution now for Leb lebanon neutral fuels uap beautiful nutmeg there beautiful football and a strong tackle strong foul from uae lebanon on the uae pwc player it's number 19 abu ghali now on the ball Amr the man foul and Lebanon now has a free kick quick quick tactics there on the on the counter attack now 
the UAE PWC side. Number seven, Matthew finds number six. Is he going to take a shot? No, they don't. The ball going wide to Michel, number nine. Who miscues his shot completely over the goalpost. PWC, UAE one, neutral fuels, Lebanon zero. We're in the last minute of the first half. Here at the La Liga Academy for the World Corporate Champions Cup. Powered by FIFCO. Five-a-side futsal tournament. Even with the sun going down now, five o'clock in the evening, the weather getting slightly better. But it's still extremely hot. Tough conditions to play football, but these guys, even though from a corporate environment, have played like absolute professionals. Brilliant to watch. Number seven, number seven now. Ali tries to take a shot. Very, very good defending from the UAE PWC side. But in the last few seconds of the first half, ball goes into the hands of Nizar. And at, on that cue, the referee blows the whistle for the first half break. UAE PWC 1, Lebanon neutral fuel 0. We will be back after a short break for the second half. Welcome back to the second half. UAE PWC versus Lebanon Neutral Fuels. Score 1-0 in the favor of UAE PWC. UAE now from left to right on the attack. Quick pass taken. Very good defending there by UAE Lebanon. Very good pass. No C. Quick pass. 
Brilliant to watch when they come off these passes. Midfield battle going on now for UAE Lebanon. Beg your pardon, Lebanon Neutral Fuels versus UAE PWC. First minute of the second half done. No damage on either side. Number seven, Matthew. <coughs> Looking for Mikael, number nine. One on one with the goalkeeper. Can he score? Very good chance there for the number six player. But poor finishing. And again, Mikhail now tries. Big opportunity there for Matthew. That was a golden chance missed by UAE PWC. He was wide open with just a goalkeeper to beat. But poor finishing in the end. UAE will want to take that two goal cushion at least in this game. We are now in the knockouts. Very good opportunity. Very good chance there. A turn and shot taken by the Lebanon forwards. Starting again, number nine, Michel. Now one on one with the goalkeeper, Nazar makes a good save. The ball was hit very hard. He tried to get catch it, just parries it away. Now the ball goes out for a corner. Hussein, number four, the defender. Lebanon neutral fuels on the attack. They have 12 minutes to find an equalizer. Corner now for you for Lebanon neutral fuels played in the air trying to find a header that was a hard shot there hard hit Matthew going for the clearance finds the shin of the Lebanon player hit very hard it's Gavin number six Gavin from Lebanon neutral fuels hit on his shins ball now in the UAPWC half I'm sure we'll see Hamza back on the field very quickly and on cue he comes back on the field and makes an impact calm cool head on his shoulders he wants his team to perform that way as well 11 minutes left now U UAE with that one goal lead. Lebanon trying to put some pressure. But kicks the ball away. Gavin unable to reach the ball on time. Short free kick now for UAE PWC. UAE PWC Nigeria. UAE Shaloub. Iran and Bangladesh, some of the best teams playing here today. Lebanon will want to make an impact, cause an upset. Again, the ball now with Lebanon. Winning the ball back from the UAE PWC strikers. That man, Nazar, kicks the ball upfield. That's an opportunity now for Jad. One on one. And a strong tackle there. Let's have a look. And what the referee decides was a very, very strong foul, very hard foul on the Lebanon players. Has the referee given a penalty? Yes, he has. It is a penalty for Lebanon. Can they equalize here?
solid kick and the equalizer for Lebanon. Neutral view. <laughs> kick and the equalizer for Lebanon. Neutral fuels one. UAE PWC one. With nine minutes left to play, now it's anyone's game. The captain Hamza feeding the ball into the path of Michel, who kicks the ball hard but misses the target completely. Lebanon, against the run of play, have scored the equalizer. And they will know now with UAE PWC coming strong, the home team. It leaves, leaves some, do, some of those gaps that can be targeted. Number six for UAE on the field. Trying to look for one of his players now. He's in the. And again, that guy, Michael, trying something spectacular. A back heel. Trying to put it in the back of the net. Taking a quick corner. Losing the ball now, back with Lebanon. They're on the counter. The goal scorer, Jad, tries to make something of it. But in the end, it's a goal kick. Hamza now trying to pull the strings from the middle. Sends the ball back to the defender. Number four, Hussein. And it's a free kick for UAE PWC. Seven minutes on the clock. The players look tired. They're exhausted. A whole day of football. It's down to this game, the knockouts. Lebanon now on the attack. Number seven, Ali. Finds the captain number 10, keeping the ball down. Hamza from UAE PWC now playing as the defender. Nizar coming up front as well to give their team support. They've made a quick substitution. UAE PWC, number six players off. Nizar now kicks the ball upfield, trying to find a player. And unfortunately, just finds a UAE PWC player, and that man, Hamza. Can he get a shot across? Yes, he does. But Nizar does really well to save that ball from going into the back of the net. And then goes on for a run. He's going really fast. He's all the way to the goal post. But the ball has gone out for a goal kick. Solid sprint by Nizar. But unfortunately, the ball had outrun him by the time he reached the goal line. Number four, Hussein now for UAE with the ball. Hamza, number 10. He's been absolutely brilliant on that left side. For the UAE PWC side, the goal scorer for UAE as well. Nizar now on the floor. You can see there's a bit of a scratch on his knee. Seems to be bleeding. These Astro turf pitches. Don't do any players any favors. Not easy to be a goalkeeper diving around. It's a bit of a break at the moment. And the ball goes out for a free kick. Five minutes on the clock. Five minutes left in this game. Tied at 1 1. UAE PWC versus Lebanon. Neutral fuels. Pumped up field by Lebanon. Trying to make something here. Number 10 back heel. Trying to find Gavin. But too far away. And a body of UAE PWC players around him. In the meantime, number seven, Matthew from UAE PWC goes on a run and has been held back. Number seven of Lebanon, Ali. 
stopping him in his path. Abu Ghali, number 19, there as well. And a free kick given in the favor of UAE PWC. Hamza over the ball. He's got Mikhail behind him for support. Seven, Matthew on his right. Nizar sets up the wall. Hamza takes a shot, hits the defender. The ball still with UAE PWC. It's Matthew, Matthew to Michel. Michel to Hussein. Hussein looks for Hamza. Can he score? No, he does not. Beautiful defending there. That could have easily been the winner. Hamza playing as the striker. Caught his shot off. But there was a body of Lebanon players in front of him. And now Lebanon start or try to start a counter. Michel now chases the ball. The score, 1-1. One, one. We are here in the quarterfinals for the World Corporate Championship. Shot taken. He was off his line there, Nazar. Very good thinking from Michel. Very, very lucky to get a slight hand on that. He was not in any position to save that. Very intelligent football from Matthew. Beg your pardon, Michel, to take that shot. Have a look at the Ireland players. They're done for the day. Now again, Matthew. Fouled there by the Lebanon players. A free kick given to UAE PWC. The referee points to his whistle. And says, everyone step back. The game starts when I blow my whistle again. Well, he has not blown his whistle. The UAE PWC trying to act a bit smart. And number seven might go into the books. No, he does not. The main referee and the linesman having a quick chat. They're asking for the ball back again. So the game it will start on the whistle of the main referee. Here we go. Last two and a half minutes of this game coming. Hamza looking for the ball. Very good defending. Good ball control and an amazing save from Nizar. The ball was headed right in the back of the net. But there was a certain man, the goalkeeper Nizar. But this time, that man, Hamza, number 10, the captain, leading from the front, scores a crucial goal. That could be the win. The captain leading from the front. Lebanon neutral fuels one with two minutes left to play. What a crucial goal and what a time to get it as well. Two minutes on the clock. Again UAE on the attack. That man Hamza takes a shot. This time it goes wide. Namak again UAE on the attack. That man Hamza takes a shot. This time it goes wide. And he has set up quite a few as well. The finishing not good from the other players. Lebanon now on the attack. Back heel. Unfortunate not to find a Lebanon player. He just kicks the ball inside. Out of hope more than anything else. Ball going out for a quick throw. Lebanon now back on the attack. UAE. All they have to do is defend for the next one minute. Not give any free shots to this Lebanon side and they'll be through. Well, another penalty. Is that a penalty or was that outside the box? We will have to see. There was a penalty given to Lebanon when they equalized. That was very, very close. Just on the box, right at the edge of the box, that free kick, that foul, one inch inside would have been a penalty and a golden chance for Lebanon to equalize 2-1 50 seconds left this game is going to the wire Lebanon neutral fuels 
One goal down with a free kick right in front of the goal post. Passes the ball and there is a defender right in front of the goal post. They're all claiming a handball. Nizar with the ball now. He's pumped up field. He's going all at it. Brilliant defending there. Absolutely brilliant tackle. Stop Nizar in his path. 30 seconds left. Lebanon under a lot of pressure now. UAE under a lot of pressure to not concede. This game has gone to the wire. An absolute classic today in the field A. Lebanon has an opportunity. They're asking for a penalty. The referee waves play on. Very, very close. Hamza now with the ball at his feet. The man of the match for today for me in this game. He still has the ball. Matthew asking for it. Matthew's asking for it. Hamza going on his own. Can they score one and finish the game? Instead, Matthew has passed the ball to a Lebanon player. But the final whistle goes. UAE PWC. Thanks to Hamza, number 10, winning the game. Two goals to one against Lebanon neutral fuels. What a beautiful match we've had. A close encounter. And that man there on your screens, Hamza, number 10. Absolutely brilliant. The game 2-1 in favor of UAE. And they qualify for the next rounds. We will be back after the short break for the last set of knockouts.
Right then, Fonction Public of Monaco with the ball in possession, playing in all red against Sonede of Tunisia. Another high quality clash here taking place at field day of the World Champions Cup at Dubai 2021. That is Daniel Gonzalez once again, the star man. Good save there by the Tunisian keeper. Does really well. An early opportunity created there by Fonction Public. Once again on the attack are the Frenchmen. Lovely dribbling there, but it's been taken away. Tunisia on the counter-attack here. Cedric doing the work there for Monaco. And Daniel Gonçalves on the ball, down the right flank, squares the ball. Takes a shot, and that's a brilliant save there by the Tunisian keeper, keeping it at nil-nil. So immediately Monaco imposing themselves on this game, creating two very good opportunities. A shot from distance, but that has been skewed away and should be a goal kick. Just about two minutes into the game and already it's been a very fast start here for Fonction Publique. This time trying to volley the ball down the line but it will go away. Tunisia have to be very careful in their own half. Very good pressing here from the all red from Fonction Publique. Tunisia of course wearing their national colors of red and white. Trying to get out of their half. They're being stifled here. Lofted ball and immediately intercepted once again. Barato on the ball, breaking into the center of the pitch, but it's been taken away and now we can have a counter-attack down the right flank. Speculative shot from distance has been blocked away. But immediately you're seeing that the team from Monaco have set the tone and are looking to be on the front foot. This time... A shot from distance goes well wide of the Monaco goal. Cedric Laudisi, the big number eight center half out there. And this man on screen is the one to watch. Look at him absolutely glide through the middle of the pitch. Low cross, but it will just about roll away for a goal kick for Tunisia. He absolutely commands your attention. Brilliant athlete, very fast, has two wonderful feet and has that goal scorer's instinct. Tunisia looking to build down the right flank, intercepted once again, good pressing, not giving them any spaces, any gaps in their own half. Our Monaco has a look to rebuild. Cedric Lauzizi pressing up on the pitch. A give-and-go attempted there, but it will be called up for a foul. Taking a hard tumble there. Foul coming in from Lucas Magnani. Scored an absolutely cracking goal in the previous game. And now Tunisia have a set-piece opportunity. Can they make it count? One man in the wall, squared to the center of the pitch. Left foot shot, a brilliant save! by the Monaco keeper at full stretch to his right. Parried away for a corner. Brilliant turn and snapshot there from Tunisia. Chipped into the box, but there's only Daniel Gonçalves there. And look at him, He's racing down the track, a low shot, just past the upright. Fingertip stuff there from the Tunisian keeper. How close were they to opening the lead there? End-to-end -end stuff here from Monaco and from Tunisia. A brilliant attacking play from both sides. Very, very lucky indeed. That could have been the opener. But intercepted in the Tunisian half and scuffs his shot. Does Arnaud. Very, very lucky, unlucky there. He's a, a pure left footer, so couldn't quite time that right-footed strike of his. And once again, Daniel has intercepted this. Once again, he's bearing down on goal. Squares the ball. 1-0 Monaco. Arnaud Sparato. The assist from Daniel Gonçalves. On goal, squares the ball. 1-0 Monaco. 
Arnold Sparrow. So they take the lead five minutes into the game. Do Fonction Public. Now Tunisia looking to rebuild from the back once again. Referee telling them to take that kick off. Poor mistake. You can't afford to do that against a class, the side, a side, the class and quality of Fonction Public. Luca Magnani getting into a bit of a tangle. But he'll just let the ball dribble out for a goal kick. Almost halfway in to session one, 15 minutes each. And of course, the clock does run down. So every minute counts, every moment counts. Firm tackle there, but Daniel still manages to retain possession. The referee has called the game up, given a foul in favor of the Frenchman. Now they can reset here with Cedric Laudizi, the big center half out there. Luca combining with Daniel. Look at that close control. Look at that ability on the ball. Absolutely magnificent. A volley into the box past the keeper. But he's held on to it for dear life. That could have been the second for Monaco very easily. Tunisia looking to get out of their own half. It's a very tough game for them so far. They've been overpowered here. Keeps the ball in possession. Good work there by the right winger. Center of the pitch opening up, has a shot, but it's deflected away for a corner. So Tunisia looking to make inroads into the Monaco half. The best they could manage was a corner kick. We've seen set-piece opportunities being created but not being taken in this tournament so far. Let's see if Tunisia can produce something here. It'll be an outswinging corner here. Down. Low cross into the box, but nicely clean up. And that man, Daniel Gonzalez, bursting down the pitch once again, down the right flank, squares the ball, and just blocked in the nick of time. Extremely close to getting their second goal, opening it up. The Tunisian defense was absolutely shredded there by Daniel once again. And they're very, very lucky to escape with that. Almost 10 minutes gone in the first half. It's been tough going so far. Monaco have played their A lineup. They've got all their stars out there. Arnaud has been very, very good on that left flank. Onto his right foot. Good shot and parried away by the Tunisian keeper. We didn't expect that from him, to be very honest. He's very much a left sided player. But that was very nicely executed. And this is a corner for Fonction Public. Manfredi out there, number seven, very pacey, attack-minded player. And strips the ball away nicely. This is a chance for Tunisia to break. But once again, they've given away possession. A speculative, speculative shot from Luca just into the side netting. Manfredi has slotted in on that left-hand side. He will go up and down the pitch for 30 minutes non-stop. Has a lot of energy, a lot of hustle and bustle, a long ball played into the box. And the Monaco keeper just about hung on to it. Could have been a dicey situation. And now it's Cedric Laudizi on the ball, calming things down as Daniel Gonzalez bursting down the pitch once again. Manfredi trying to have a shot, but he'll be satisfied with the corner for now. Just about five minutes to go in the first half. It's been all fonction publique so far. The men in red have absolutely dominated proceedings. The Tunisian side have been rocked. Still hanging in there. It's only a difference of one goal. But they definitely seem to be outmatched here so far. Luca having a shot from distance. Bit of a fumble from the keeper, but he... Manages to grab onto it on the second attempt. They have to be very careful with the way they bring out the ball from the back. Monaco are looking to press them. They need to move the ball at pace. Keep moving. Give and go. You can see the relentless pressure being created. Manfredi on the ball. Chance for a strike. 
and the keeper has tipped it over for a corner. Brilliant athletic stuff from Tunisia. But they're just hanging on by a thread. You do feel that they could be in for a barrage in the second half. They need to keep the deficit to one going into the break. They can regroup, they can re-emerge, reconfigure their lineup, create some new tactics, some new strategies. This time flicked on. First time shot onto the side, netting off the keeper. It'll be another corner. They don't need to hang on for these three minutes. Into the box once again, fired in, and this time there could be a counter-attack on here for Tunisia. Down the left flank, squares the ball, off the crossbar. What a shot! Unbelievable! A golden opportunity, and luck just didn't favor them there. Superb, swift counter-attack. Squared the ball to the attacker, and he's clanged it off the upright. Very, very close there, Tunisia, to leveling it all up. And you do feel that that opportunity was going to be a rare one that they needed to capture immediately. Three minutes remaining in the half. Monaco slowing it right down. Content to keep the ball. And Tunisia not really pressing them at all. Very intent on defending first. This is much more like it. Need to step into Monaco's half. And look at that. Creating pressure has created a turnover. You need to fight fire with fire. You can't hang back and wait for something to happen. You need to make something happen. Chipped into the center. It's going to be cleaned up by Cedric. Enterprising run down the left-hand side and they'll pick up a kick in. That was Cedric Moraleda. And it's going to be Luca Magnani to take the kick in there. Just about two and a half minutes to go in the first half. Quickly played into the center, but only finding a Tunisian defender. And it's been cleared away. But there's absolutely nobody in white in Monaco's half. It's all men in defensive positions. Into the box, Manfredi. Good save by the Tunisian keeper once again. Desperately getting it away. Didn't quite hit the ball sweetly there. Allowed the Tunisian keeper who's had a pretty torrid time so far. Rolling subs, of course. So you've seen the likes of Manfredi and Moraleda come in for Monaco. Might see Christophe Dumoulin and JC Brancato as well. Number 6 and 19 respectively. Moraleda on the ball this time. Taken away nicely. There's some space down the right flank with Cedric Lodizzi. Cleases Clones it, but now he loses it. Shot at goal. Twice the Monaco keeper does really well. Closes down the angle. And now once again, Moraleda on the ball. Playing it across. The keeper was stranded. And it just goes past the left upright. Very, very close. Monaco will feel aggrieved. They haven't scored at least three to four goals here so far. Cedric mistiming his first time shot. Stepping into that one though and the Tunisian keeper will clean up. Once again it's Lucas Magnani stepping out. A very balanced player. You, he can expect him to defend well. He attacks quite fluently too. And now this time a good break on. Nice flick on. Some space here but loud easy. Absolutely brilliant. Such a powerful presence in the middle of the back line for Monaco. Does so much. A shot and a brilliant save there by the Tunisian keeper. Getting down quickly and blocking it off. We've seen a very high caliber of futsal so far here from Monaco. But only one goal to show for it. Once again cut away. But it's rolling away just down to the right flank of the Tunisians. And that will be half time here. A very, very interesting game going on so far. Fonction Publique with the narrow lead. We'll be right back after this half time break to bring you all the action at the World Corporate Champions Cup. Stay tuned.
back for the second half here at the World Corporate Champions Cup at the La Liga Academy in Dubai Sports City. We have Monaco taking on Sonade from Tunisia. <coughs> Pardon me. A slim lead here for Frenchmen, but they've created plenty of opportunities yet to capitalize on them. Moraleda on the ball right now. Cedric Laudizi, the big presence in the center of the park for Monaco. He's been dominant as always. Now breaking down the left flank are the Tunisians, but once again, Manfredi, with the assistance of his goalkeeper, cleans up any danger. Some substitutes are in right now for Monaco as well. You can see number six out there for Monaco. It's JC Brancato coming on at halftime. But Cedric Laudizi has been given an extended run, as has this young man, Hughie Manfredi. Working it all the way back to Brancato, playing the sweeper role, chipping the ball into the Tunisian box, but nicely cut away. Needed to make that clearance there. And Tunisia can reset. Nice ball, rounds the keeper, but just about getting it away in time, Brancato. A foul given there. Aggressive play there by the Tunisian striker. And very, very lucky to get away with that, to be honest. That could have easily been a goal for the Tunisians. Cedric Laudizi chipping the ball down the left flank, but there's nobody there. Moraleda could not get around in time. And you can see that press from the Frenchman. Nicely switched away. Low speculative shot, but that was well wide of goal. But a nicely worked routine there from the Tunisians. They're only a goal down, not far away at all. If they can restore parity here, you absolutely never know. Futsal can be a very funny game. They just created that big opportunity that was cut off by the Monaco goalkeeper. Nice footwork there by Moraleda and very nicely done. Laudizi surveying the field. Manfredi comes in short to receive the ball. Brancaro there, that was well beyond him. And the referee will stop play there. Could have let it go quite easily, but have to follow the rules, of course. Good inlet ball there. A bit of space here. Laudizi, brilliant physical presence there. Doesn't allow anybody to get past him. The Tunisians will have to reset. Good ball, good turn as well. Down the right flank. There's an opportunity here. Nice footwork, flicks it away. 1-1, Tunisia have equalized. What a goal. Brilliant here. Nice footwork, flicks it away. 1-1, Tunisia have equalized. What a goal. What a moment in this game. Monaco have been rocked. 11 minutes to go. That's the last thing they would have expected. And now we're all square. Laudizi chipping the ball in. Nobody there to receive it. And I think we might need to see the return of number 18 for Monaco. Daniel Gonsalves. He is their ace. He is their star striker. He might need to get out there once again and create that goal. Moraleda out there to take the corner. Laudizi jumping into the box. Just goes beyond him. 11 minutes to go in the game. Tunisians have shown a lot of resolve, a lot of determination. And they've equalized just at the right time. There he is, number 18 on the right of your screen. The star striker is out there. They need a goal and they've turned to him. So they withstood all that early pressure from Monaco, kept themselves in the game. But now this is going to be the real challenge. Can they keep denying him? Some aggressive tackles there. The Tunisian defender not happy at all with the referee. Giving him a bit of a glare there. Ten minutes to go in the game. Fascinating contest taking place right now on field day. This has been worked away, nicely cut away by the Tunisian defender. 
Read the ball well. Manfredi out there with Daniel Gonzalez. Moraleda is still out there as well. Shot by Laudizi, but it's cut away. Now this trying to get away shots from distance. That will suit the Tunisians very nicely indeed. They just don't want Daniel Gonzalez around the box. That's where he's truly dangerous. Good aggressive tackle there, winning possession. Trying one move too many. Manfredi, there's an overload here for the Monaco team here. Three versus one. And it's given as a foul. They're pleading, they're protesting with the referee, but he said, no dice. A dangerous free kick opportunity here for Fonction Publique. Only one man in the wall so far. The angle does not favor the right footer at all, but you can expect anything from Daniel Gonzalez. Tries to play a quick low cross, but cut away this time. Manfredi rolling it back to Laudesi. Now it's Brancaro on the ball to Daniel Gonzalez. He has a bit of space. Ball cut away, good interception. Now they can counter-attack here, the Tunisians. Nice ball played in and 2-1. Can you believe it? Tunisia have taken the lead. What a shock taking place on field day. Monaco have been ripped apart. Nice ball played in and 2-1. Can you believe it? Tunisia have taken the lead. What? And now for once the much fancied Frenchmen are now up against the wall. Will they respond? 2-1 to the Tunisians. Eight and a half minutes to go. An unlikely victory on the cards here for the Tunisians. They've had to withstand so much relentless pressure. This time a guilt-edged opportunity wasted by Sparato. Still 2-1 for the Tunisians. Man the walls. Shut it down. Nicely flicked away. But the keeper has to step in. It's a full court press here from Monaco. Daniel on the left flank trying to get that ball in, but nicely cut away. It's going to be a corner. Seven and a half minutes away from a famous victory are the Tunisians. Can they hang in there? Can they deny the red storm of Monaco? Sparato working it towards Laudizi, creating an opening, opening here, but the Tunisian keeper has gobbled it up immediately. Brilliant defense. And once again, the ball cheaply given away in their own half. They need to be switched on here. The coach and think tank need to think about making subs if the starters are getting tired. Daniel on the ball, trying to create an opening. Give and go. But once again, the Tunisian keeper has read it like a book. Under seven minutes to go. Pump down the ground. Nice take, brilliant first touch, just getting away from him. Cedric on the ball. <clears throat> and look at that. Even the most straightforward passes are going out for kick-ins. The Frenchmen are feeling the heat. They're feeling the pressure. They're feeling the tag of tournament favorites. Tunisia are about to get the most shocking result of the night if they can pull it off. Cedric steps into that one. Nice take there. He has space here for a shot, tries to get that low cross in once again. It's been cut away, blocked this time. And six minutes to go. They have a date with destiny, do the Tunisians. They've had very little of the ball. They've been defending throughout this game. But when they had their opportunities, they took them and buried them in style. And now, just five minutes away. Can they hang on? Corner for them. Precious seconds being burned. Monaco looking very agitated. Looking around for answers. Looking around for solutions. Short corner play. Trying to retain possession. But Daniel steps in. It's going to be yet another kick in for the Tunisians. More precious time on the ball. The 
Seconds are ticking away from Monaco. And they're stuck in their own half, deep in their own half. Daniel has intercepted this. There's space on the right flank, squares the ball. Sparato on it. Back to Daniel, a brilliant tackle. Brilliant interception. Five minutes to go, hang on Tunisia. Hang on. Losing the ball in his own half. He's taken a hit to the face, gone down, but this is an opportunity for a counter. And he's skewed his shot wide. The Monaco keeper having words with the referee. But he said, no dice, play on. What a moment this would be. What a game this has been already. A furious tactical battle. Daniel Fernandez, Gonzalez on the ball once again. Good tackle there, but pulled up by the referee. Free kick needs to be taken quickly. Just about four and a half minutes remaining. You can see the nervous anxiety on the face of the Tunisian dugout. They have fought tooth and nail for this lead. They don't want to give it up now. Daniel with the big run up. Looks like he's going to have a shot on goal. Two walls here built by the Tunisians. And it's gone straight into one of them. Cedric stepping in, trying to keep the ball in play. And he's done that very well. Nobody in the Monaco half. They've taken a huge gamble here. They need this goal. They need the equalizer. Down the right flank, given away. Goal kick for Tunisia. Under four minutes to go. All the big names have come up short for Monaco. Pump down the ground, cut away by Cedric. Tunisia need to realize keeping the ball is the name of the game. There's no point just pumping the ball towards the Monaco back line. They need to keep it and stay there in their half. And that's smart. That's how you need to do it. Just keep it away from them. Play possession football. Incredible match. Incredible game. Monaco were thundering down but kept being denied, kept being denied and this time this was a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. That could have been buried. That would have been the game. Under three minutes to go. 2-1 to the North Africans. Can they do a sensational, stunning victory here. Sparrow with the shot. The Tunisian keeper holds on. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Two and a half minutes to go. Played on the left flank, trying to nutmeg. Young Luca Magnani there. That kick in has gone towards the Frenchman. They're having a word here. They're having a look. Bit of argy bargy around. The Tunisian box, tempers are getting frayed. They need to calm down. All of this time that's being wasted will be counted as injury time. So there's no point trying to stop play. Just need to hang in there. They're two minutes away from a stunning victory. That will send shockwaves throughout the tournament. Luca tries to play the ball and he's missed it, Cedric. A guilt-edged opportunity has gone away. Under two minutes to go. Through ball played, it's one-on-one. -on -one. Cedric versus the Tunisian attacker. He's beaten him for once. But a clever dummy there by the Monaco keeper. Gets the ball out quickly to Hugi Manfredi. Referee telling him to do it properly. Need to roll it when you're within the parameter of the pitch. One minute, 20 seconds to go. Cedric Laudisi on the ball, plays it down the right flank, crosses it into the center. Will it be given as a corner? Yes, it has. Luca Magnani racing to the corner spot. Trying to fire it in quickly. Float it into the box. Brilliant work there by the Tunisian keeper. Under a minute to go. Brilliant dummy. And the Monaco keeper has stuck a hand out. Was he within the box though? No, he wasn't. A booking for him. Precious seconds being knocked off. You can see the exasperation on the bench for Fonction Publique. They cannot believe it. How have they lost this game? They have dominated from minute one to minute 30. And yet, they're about to face defeat. That is the magic of five on five futsal. That is the magic of the World Corporate Champions Cup. A free kick right on the edge of the box. Three men in the wall for Monaco. 
Tunisia can just wind the clock down, play it into the corners. Will they be cheeky and push for goal? Two men on either side of the wall. Absolutely incredible scenes here. Squared and straight at the keeper. That was an opportunity, but they will get a corner. Precious seconds being knocked off. The clock has wound down. We're into extra time. We're into injury time. They're in stunned silence in the Monaco dugout. They cannot believe it. How have they lost this game? Chipped towards that back. Left hand flank. They're just switching sides here. Keeping it in the air. Keeping it away from Monaco. Cedric has taken possession. And there it is. Victory for the Tunisians. An upset of a lifetime. What a victory. The flags are out. An incredible win. An incredible victory over the tournament favorites. Sonede Tunisia, you can rejoice. A brilliant victory.